Hey folks, what's going on everybody? If you notice a little bit of lag in the stream, in the quality of the stream, I'll do my best to explain that in a minute. Your eyes are not, uh, are not deceiving you. My name's Dave McRae, coming to you live from the Voice Man Studios in Toronto, Canada. He's Tony Michael from Atlanta, Georgia. This is episode 130 of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. It's Halloween night, October the 31st, 2021. We're watching Halloween Kills. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live! We are live, ladies and gentlemen, episode 130. Halloween Kills is the movie we're watching tonight. It is Sunday, October the 31st, 2021, 8.09 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Do, 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 do. You may notice a bit of lag in the stream. Now, if you do, I am blaming it on the fact that I am logged into a V. PN. Uh, so the stream may be a little choppy. Uh, the quality may not be the best. I'm just giving you warning right now uh, that could have something to do with it. Hopefully uh, this is okay. Hopefully the audio is okay. Uh, and we'll just, we'll just see how this goes. But it is the only way, being that I am based in Toronto, Canada, it is the only way that I am able to access Peacock, because I, we Canadians are not allowed to have Peacock. You're not allowed. You fucking suck because you're Canadian. Because you're Canadian and you suck. You suck because you're Canadian. Oh, yeah, well, I'm going to get a VPN. Don't you get a VPN. Oh, I'm going to get a VPN. Don't you fucking get a VPN. What can we do? He's getting a VPN. You know what we can do? We can fucking totally, like, make a stream lag. That's what we'll do. <laughs> That's what happened. Tony, how are you? That's what happened. I am good. How are you? <laughs> Holy shit. That's a hell of a way to start. <laughs> I'm not doing too bad. I'm not doing too bad. Uh, again, apologies for the lag in the stream. But uh, hey, like I said, it's the only way I can watch the fucking movie. And Tony, thank you again for allowing me to access your Peacock account. I have distributed yeah, all course. your information all over the world. Um, so, yeah, for uh, those uh, who are watching tonight, uh, there's only one place where we can watch it. <laughs> that's right, which is Peacock. So if you live in the United States... You you can watch along with us on Peacock. Uh, that's where we're watching it. Tony and I are paused nine seconds in. The Universal Studios logo is just about to pop onto the screen. It's just about to pop onto the screen. If you are watching, if you are somewhere else in the world, not in the United States, and maybe you're here in Canada, maybe you're across the pond in the UK, uh, or somewhere else where you do not have access to Peacock, but maybe you have found a way to get it anyway. You've ripped it, you've you've got some secret, you know, you got a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy who opens his trench coat and is like, hey man, you wanna buy Halloween kills? You know me? You gotta, exactly, you got the guy that none of us know, but we all know. That's right, like, exactly. Hey man, I got Halloween kills. You don't need that Peacock shit. What do you want, exactly. you want Halloween kills? You want it in color you want it in black and white you want the nudity there is no nudity oh there's nudity baby um <laughs> oh, uh how's your halloween night going man uh it's quiet here uh i took a i took a starbucks run about an hour ago which would have been like around seven o'clock and mm. i drove up around some streets just to see just to see if there's any nothing like nothing it's dead really um yeah. fascinating I, you know i don't you know and i don't know i don't know if it's just the general area that i live in where there's just no kids mm. um it's it's it, but it's I, I think i've seen this progressively just get worse and worse over the years i mean i left out a little table with a little bowl with candy on it if right kids should come by rather than having to get up and answer the door um, they can just grab the candy, but I, I have a feeling by the time we finish tonight and I go back out there, I think the whole thing is going to be there. It's, mm. It just, I, I'm seeing more and more, uh, in our area. I don't know what it's like up there or where anyone else lives. Uh, but this like trunk or treat thing is becoming extremely popular. So like last night, oh, um, when I, I went it. out and, uh, I drove past this church, uh, that was hosting it one of like three in our area that were hosting it and it was packed. It, it looked like a carnival. It was just insanely packed. Wow. And, uh, you had all these cars, you know, and people had trunks of music playing and all that. And it was raining. 
and it yeah, was yeah, packed. Yeah. I mean, so like, I mean, like it was like, okay. So, I mean, the Halloween spirit is still there. Um, I think the whole trick or treating thing, man, I think, it, I think it's a few things. One COVID I'm sure is playing a huge part of it for sure. And I get, I get that. Um, and I just think we live in a different t- world now. I don't think trick or treating is, is, is going to be like what you and I No, no, not all. Actually, I was just, um, I was out for a run earlier. Uh, I went for a run about six o'clock, I guess. And, uh, that's like prime time for all the little kids to be out. And yep. uh, I did. I saw them. They were out, and and I was okay. I was impressed. Uh, you know, I've I've been where I am right now for almost ten years. And when I first moved here, there weren't too many kids in the area. But I think it's because they were not born yet, or they were very young. And yeah, now too. that I've been here for a while, they're sort of at that age where they're they're out now. So it was a nice, pleasant surprise to see kids out in the neighborhood trick or treating, and and you know, a few came by, and haven't seen any Michael Myers yet. But uh, it was I've it was kind of cool. In all the years that I've dressed as Michael for Halloween and it pretty much almost has been every year consistently since I was 11. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never seen anybody dressed as Michael. I've never come other than my buddy Devin, but he'll usually dress up like if we're doing like a Halloween party, like, right. but I'm talking about like on the day. I've seen a lot of Jason's, a lot of knockoff Jason mask, a lot of knockoff ghost face mask. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, well, that's good though. That's good to hear that in your area, you're seeing a little bit uh, of it. Cause our area just blows it. Nothing like what it was when I was a kid, when I was a kid, man, I mean like, Oh yeah. It same. Was, like my mom, we were talking about this earlier in the week. Like she would go through 10 bags within 90 minutes, yeah. literally with yeah. 90 minutes. Like, and what yeah. we did as kids, we would go back, like we would trick or treat for like an hour, come back because yeah. we were packed. Our pillowcases were packed. Yeah. You dump it dump, and go back dump out. Dump our again. candy, go back yeah. out. But what ended up happening is my mom yeah. had to use the candy we dumped because yeah. she was all out and give it to basically reissue candy that we were given right. <laughs> That's uh, to the trick. Cause she hadn't, it, but that was just what it was like. I mean, right. you know, it would be like groups of like 20 groups of 20 group, but I'm, I'm glad that's how I can look back on my childhood where it yeah. was just, you know, packed streets of yeah. New England in a small little town, nice it the, neighborhood. It was the same up here. It was the same up here. It's, it's certainly not what it used to be. That's for sure. That is definitely no. for well, sure. Cause I think like, you know, like I said, people are doing like the trunk or treat thing. And, uh, I didn't even know that was a thing. Like until I started seeing the signs and I was like, what the hell is yeah. a trunk or treat? Yeah. I've, and I've, then I've I saw what it was last night. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, that okay. makes sense. Trunk Giving it treat. out of your car. Trunk okay, or cool. treat. Come look at the dead body in the car, kids. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you this one, uh, this one church really like shocked me for being a church. Like, I mean, mm. they had it all decked out and like, like had like kind of like, were kids dressed say, up as the devil? Oh No, they were dressed up. But bad. I mean, I didn't see any like, like that but like they had kind of like a haunted maze through the church now really? obviously through, the church. That's through a- the church like through through hmm. the whole church and whatnot it's a catholic I was like, church i maybe like i don't know hmm. i can look and i would see have dressed up as the by. devil and gone to the priest and been like i want you now <laughs> i'm sure I'm, people, I'm sure someone's done that in the past <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, maybe it's a regional thing too. Maybe like this is the thing down here. People are more into maybe it is this, like trunk or treat thing and let that churches do. Um, I mean, I do live in the Bible Belt, so I mean, yeah, that's, well, I, maybe that's. I it. just never heard what the hell it was until I, like I said, I saw all the signs. And, I got gotcha. you. Um, I got gotcha. you. And it, like I said, it looked like a fucking carnival. Like wow. I was like, holy crap! Like this is crazy. But yeah. it's encouraging that okay, they're celebrating it, but they're not doing like. You know, the right. shit that we did is I get you. I get you. Um, and then folk- our neighborhood was toilet paper too the other day. And I was like, yes. Nice. <laughs> nice. Like, yes, yes, kids. Good, 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 good job, that, kids. Good that job. That is totally like bringing back some yeah. 80s and 90s nostalgia when I saw That's that. It. I was like, good job. Just don't just don't light anything on fire. Um, if you're just joining us and you notice a bit of lag in uh, the stream, it is not you. It is not your eyes. Uh, obviously, me being here in Toronto, I in order for me to access Peacock, I have to use a VPN. So because I am currently using a VPN right now, uh, there may be some lag in the stream because of that. So uh, just be mindful. As long as the audio sounds okay and, you know, the video is not too bad, then I think we're, we're okay to go. And I can see the connections kind of going up and down a little bit. So hopefully it won't crap out on us totally. Uh, but there's only one way to find out, and that's to start the movie, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for Halloween Kills? And, you know, Tony really really liked this movie when he saw it. I uh, really enjoyed it on first watch. Now, what do I mean by that? It doesn't mean that I fucking love Halloween Kills. I'm just saying that I had a good time watching it. You, I've talked about this on my well, channel. I'll say it. 
I but, fucking loved Halloween Kills. There you go. I didn't fucking love <laughs> Halloween I fucking Kills. I loved it. But he loved it. He loved it. And he I thought did. it was great. I did. Which is, which is great. I didn't love it. I liked aspects of it uh, and were disappointed with other things too. So, um, you know, but uh, it's, just, it's the world of fandom, right? You can say one thing and people take it literally, you know, and... and uh, uh, well, if you take what I'm saying literally, I fucking loved it. Well, there you go. It you can take. You, you can <laughs> That's absolutely. What you can take that literally. <laughs> you can take. You can take it literally from uh, from Tony. But I am more nuanced. I had somebody reach out to me the other day, and they were like, "Dave, I think you're just too nuanced for most people." And I was like, "No, I think you're right. I, I, I think it's true because I tend to kind of a analyze and get in there and look and pick apart, and I like this and I like that, and you know, whereas most people, I think, nah, I, just, I don't care. I want to know about that. I just, do you like it or not? Do you like it or not? Well, I, I, well, I, I, I don't know. It's I can't. No, no, no. Then no, because I have to. There's this I like, and there's that I don't like, and there's this I like, and there's that. I, that's, that's that's too much. It's too much for me, man. It's too fucking much, man. Um, <laughs> I think Dave. I think Dave is the reincarnation of Walter Matthau's character from Grumpy Old Man. Oh, maybe I am. Maybe I that's am. What I think. Maybe that's I am. What maybe I, I am. Think. Well, because I think what I should have done in my first initial tweets when I saw this film, I should have. I and I didn't think to do this because I trust that my audience knows. But I, I should have prefaced it by saying, "Hey." You know, I really enjoyed it on my first watch, which I think I said, uh, has a lot of problems, in my opinion, of course, right? Has a lot of problems. I feel it has a lot of problems, uh, but here's what I liked. I think if I had said that, I think then people would have been like, oh, I get what Dave is saying. But I didn't say that. I just went into what I liked about it. And I think people took that as, oh, he fucking really likes the movie. And it's like, well, no, hang on, hold your horses, <laughs> you know? But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, the only the only review I saw of this, and, and I, made, I made that a conscious effort for myself because because I wanted to continue to enjoy the overall experience that I've had with this movie so far. Absolutely. Uh, I saw I saw your initial thing there in, in Mini Times Square, Toronto, with your buddy Bruce. Yeah. Uh, when you guys first got out of the theater. So, and everything you were saying, I was like, okay, I get what you're saying. And it was 100% truthful. You know what I mean? It was. Yeah, it, it, very it, truthful. It, 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 on it was first our first watch, right? It was our first watch. We noticed all those things that are like, mm, yeah, but we put them aside. I mean, we even yeah. talked about all those, you know, negative things we had, but on our way back to Dundas, Square, Bruce and I said to um, each other, when we go live, let's focus on the things we did like, you know, let's make it kind of a nice experience for the fans and focus, because I can focus on the, you know, the things I didn't like later. And I think people took right. that to mean that I thought it was fucking amazing. You know what I mean? And, right. and yeah, yeah. I think if you came out like all negative Nancy and just like, like it, it. it would basically it would have deflated everyone's like, and that's why I made, and it's not like a diss at anyone who does reviews and, you know, like people that I normally watch like you and Cody yeah. uh, and wham. I just, for me, I just said, you know what? I'm, I'm enjoying this right now. And I've haven't had, a Halloween movie, a new release Halloween movie where I've been able to just kind of sit back and go, man, I enjoyed it. And right. I'm going to continue. And I'm, and I'm just in a good space with it. And I want to be in that good space. I get you know it. what I mean? Totally get so, it, man. Totally get it. Ready, All right, Freddy? folks, here we go. You are ready? You pause. You should, you should have dressed as Freddy. I should have dressed as Freddy. Uh, pause. Nine seconds in watching on Peacock. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go in five, four, three, Two and one. Ooh, there's that oh, music. Should I tell them? Should I tell them the story before it gets to the scene, though? Because I've been dying to tell the story. Uh, you mean at the, at the at, opening here, at the very beginning here? What happens like really fast? What happens really fast? Yeah, I don't know if you've told me this. Yeah, I did. I texted to you. I said when the very the, when when he's laying there and all of a sudden the music kicked in, I jumped up like oh, screaming. Oh right, 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 right. Yes, yes, that's right. True story. This is what happened, folks. Okay, so for those who have seen the movie, okay, mm -hmm. so you know when Hawkins, he's laying there and he's bleeding and it kicks into the flashback sequence. Yeah. As soon as I heard the OG score, I'm telling you, it was the, the only comparisons I can give you guys is. The 1996 version of Tony jumping up and down on his couch going ballistic when Michael Jordan came back and won his first title after his two year <laughs> departure because I was a huge Jordan fan growing up. And right. I mean, that was my genuine like my soda went this way. My Cheetos went this way. I'm like, fuck, yeah, I'm literally that's what I said yes. when I'm hearing the music and I see the old school Michael Myers because like you and I, we weren't a, well, we were 
babies when the movie yeah. came. Well, no, we weren't even born when the first movie came out. Yeah. That's as close to the original film and experiencing it for the first time right. that you and I are ever going to get. You well, know right. what I mean? And, sure. And, and you know, I know there's a, and I, and I understand it. There's a lot of people that, that have said that, you know, it's too bad that the whole movie couldn't have been 90 minutes in that world. And, and I agree, I agree with that, but I'll put a little mark beside that and say, but that doesn't, you know, maybe it's best that they were in and out fairly fast because, you know, if you spend 90 minutes in that world, that's an extra 90 could minutes where you, where you could ruin it. You could fuck it up even further. And, I, and I'm not saying that the filmmakers are not talented enough to live in that world and create something really great. But you also have to remember, too, that it would have upped the budget because now it becomes a period piece and it would have upped the budget absolutely 100%. So sure. uh, they were able to do that for, you know, 10 minutes and, and it was a lot of fun. It was great. And I, sitting in the theater watching for the first time at an early screening, I was able to really enjoy that. I, I was treating it like a ride. Like, this is really cool. The set deck and everything. And we're here, of course, Cameron is kneeling down beside Hawkins and and uh, yelling for help. And then Hawkins is going to come back alive here. He must die. He must die, motherfuckers. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, um, he doesn't say motherfuckers, but... Uh, definitely what we're about to see here in a second was this shot uh, the, the shit out of me of though. I gotta, the best I gotta part admit. And then everybody messaged me afterwards. Cause I guess apparently in the, uh, I, I haven't seen it. I guess there's a trailer where it shows Hawkins was alive. Mm. I thought dude was dead going into this movie. Like mm. cause I, I didn't watch any of the trailers. Right. You know what I mean, right, so like right. other than the teaser trailer, I thought dude was dead. So when I saw dude alive, I was like, what? Right. Are you kidding me? He's yeah. Alive? I knew, I knew he was alive. I knew he was alive and folks. Well, yeah. That's what, you know, yeah. People who had, ah, here we go. I do see your super chats, folks. Bring them in. We'll get to them. I won't miss them. If you want, uh, your, yeah, look at that. It looks fucking great. It's fucking so great. good. Again, this is as close as you and I are ever going to get to the original film and experiencing yeah. it. And the flashbacks, I stand to be corrected, but I think the flashbacks here were shot on the Aerie Alexa, which is the same same type of uh, same, camera we yeah. use for Billy. And which it, it would looks make fantastic. sense. It, it looks great. Yeah, it looks great. I don't know if the if the whole movie was shot on the Aerie. Uh, probably. I don't know what version of the Aerie though. Like we shot on the Aerie Mini. I think they might they might have shot on the Aerie. Maybe the ST is it? Maybe I'm not sure. But same same family anyway. <laughs> but this is great. Like and 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 the alleyway that they found here looks very much like the alleyway from Halloween Two. Even though Halloween Absolutely. Two is not canon, you buy that this is 1978. The tremendous yeah. job they've done on the lighting, the color grading, everything, the the costume design. Uh, you know, even the bit of the sideburns that these guys have here, little details like that. Right? You totally yeah, buy it. 78. Absolutely. You know, the cars that they were driving as well too. For sure. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You know, and Aaron Armstrong, and ironically, folks, people, I mean, Aaron Armstrong, who plays uh, the shape in the flashback here, he's getting rave reviews, and so he should, he looks great, but did you know that he's actually about six foot three? He looks yeah, very like, Nick Castle-like, and he moves I, I like Nick just, Castle, but he's 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 James Jude Courtney's height, uh, ironically. It's the wide shot. It's it's shooting from a distance, which is going to create a tall person to make them look smaller. I mean, that's, that's it. That's it. That's camera that's it. tricks. Yeah. You and know, if, it, it's basic tricks. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, but he looks great and he does a, a, a great job. Like this, you know, that these two guys are probably easily six foot. Yeah. But sure. from a distance, yeah. the way they had that wide shot of them looking over Haddonfield, yeah. they look, they looked small. So that's why when you guys, or I think it was last week when we were streaming, yeah. when you, I, you guys told me that he was six, three, I was like, no shit. Like, cause he really, from the shots that we see him in this movie, he looked like more of Nick Castle's physique, which is what I was yeah. really impressed with. Yeah, here we are. Lonnie's, I, th these bullies, I, I didn't think that this was really necessary. Yeah, it felt where's a little, Lonnie's boys? Well, it felt a little overdone to me. I think, like a lot of this movie did, I would have rather have seen Lonnie continue to bully other kids. Like or just as hanging he's, out with his buddies after they just left the Myers house. But that's what I mean. Like he's walking down the street and he's bullying other kids. He's picking on other kids. He's taking their candy or whatever. W why didn't we see that? Like I, I, I guess we're seeing the bully bullied, but I, I just don't think it was necessary. This looks great though. 
You know, the cop car and everything. Yeah, MAGA Cat says, I know Dave had six above this. That's from my ranking earlier today. But folks, you have to keep in mind, a lot of people have missed this, even though I stressed it in my video, which makes me wonder people just fast forwarded right to my ranking because I know I talk a lot. But I, I said in that video, the ranking is from the, not it's not best to worst or worst to best. That's a different ranking altogether. I mean, you know, Somewhat. I mean, obviously, there'd be a few films in there that would remain the same. My ranking was just what I enjoy watching. Put a pin in that for a second. I want to come back to that. I love this shot here. Lonnie, his silhouette there, and, and he's, you know, looking around and the, 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 the sound design and everything. Fucking great. That's great shit. That's a great moment. Love him running down the sidewalk here, the way everything looks. The flashback is the strongest fucking part of this movie. 100%, hands down, no question. No question. And the moment here where the shape's going to be on top of him here in a second, he looks great. Aaron Armstrong looks great. Look at this. Look at this. It looks fucking great. Totally. I totally buy it's Nick Cass. I mean, it's not Nick Cass, but, but you know what I mean? Yeah, I, but I buy it. It looks like... Yeah. I buy it. I buy it. Really, really well done. I was just going to say that um, my 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 franchise ranking video that I posted earlier today, the the measuring stick was what what movies do I just enjoy watching? That doesn't mean I enjoy them because they're good. Like some movies, some bad movies might be ahead of some good movies because I enjoy watching the bad movie over the good movie just because it's so bad. Like, you know what I mean? That's why you have, you know, six above kills, you know, uh, or, or, or five above H2O or, you know, it's, 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 it was that kind of a ranking to rank the franchise from best to worst. That's a different ranking that I would have to do. So just, I thought I made that clear, but there's a lot of people that are missing. Love the detail the Myers has. The fucking drain pipe or the East Roth there, whatever it is, against the window. Oh, yeah. Fucking from great. Early, earlier in the evening with yes. Lewis and the sheriff. Because we have yeah. to remember that this is literally, what, maybe an hour and a bit later, two hours later, tops? Like, this yeah. is not that much later from the original you know, film. That's what I love about this. I love that we get to see the dog from a different perspective. Unnecessary, totally fan service, but it works. That's kind of cool. Hawkins, there's a dog. What? Never mind. The fans got it. <laughs> yeah, this would be fourth on the list for me. Um, I had it in the third spot, but then I watched Halloween 2 last night, and I freaking love that movie. I really do. Halloween 281, that yeah. movie is just like... It's great. It's it's It'll never top Halloween 4, which is always going to... Halloween 4 will always be in that two slot for me. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, after the first film. Uh, but yeah, this... Um, yeah, this is an easy four for me. It definitely replaced uh, Season of the Witch. So Season of the Witch got mm. bumped down to number five. I enjoy um, the first... I enjoy... I've seen this... This is my fourth time watching this. I mean, we're half... Five watching it right i mean we're watching it but we know we're talking and we're doing a show yeah. i've but watched it four times this will be five half yeah I, I i will say that again i mean i i like the first 15 minutes of this movie it's it's very strong the flashback is strong the set decoration is fantastic i believe it's 1978 i totally believe it's 1978 but again i mean not that i don't believe they could but just because they were able to pull off 15 minutes of pretty fucking awesome shit here doesn't mean they could have done it for 90. I mean, it, I mean, maybe a half hour, you know, maybe another 15 They may minutes. have, they may have, but then you would have to create a scenario in 1978. Now you're adding so much more mythology to 1978. Whereas this, you're adding a little bit, but you're in and out. And, you know, the less time you spend here, you know, the less time there is to fuck it up. Not well, saying that they would, I, but I I'm think just saying. The the idea that I mentioned a few weeks ago. Watch how ago. He fast he comes out of the sorry, dude. Watch how fast he comes out of the fucking room here. Just like just like Bob. Just like Bob. Love that. Love that. Very 1978. And I like the um they call that like um documentary style filmmaking where the mm. camera's kind of shaking. Yep, yeah. Except for right there. Yeah. Of course, the Adds body shot that he takes confusion. in the stomach, you could totally see that he's wearing a body pad. That's, yeah. You know what I mean? You could see that he's wearing a body pad and when he gets punched in the stomach. Yeah. The only thing I would have done here differently is not shown the bottom of his lids, Michael's lids, just kind of his eyes there. I, I wouldn't have had that. And then people would be like, but Dave, you saw the bottom of his lids in the original Halloween when he was walking up behind Laurie after he sat up and turned his head. Yes, I know. And I didn't like it there either. What's your point? <laughs> 
<laughs> I wouldn't have shown that. That 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 bothers me in the original movie too. Um, again, it's it doesn't ruin anything. It, it, I guess it's consistent if you think back to that moment in the original film. But it's just something that I I wouldn't have had that. I I don't think it was necessary to show that. But doesn't ruin anything. The performance is great. Everything looks really cool. The detail is great. He's using the rope. He's using the rope to strangle that cop. The evil is here. That's probably the rope that he got from the hardware store. That's right. He's here. The evil is here. Tom, Tom, Tom Jones Jr., baby. Tom he, Jones he Jr. killed it as Loomis. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. No, 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 Let's no, just no. say of all the actors who have played <laughs> Loomis, he's definitely the second best. <laughs> <laughs> he is the well, second best to play I love Loomis. Mal- I love Malcolm McDowell. Or Yeah, I love Malcolm, but yeah. Right. A- after what Rob Zombie did to yeah. him in part two, like, yep. no, no, no. Yeah. Um, Michael, stay back. Look at this guy's hair. He fucking looks like a wig. It's Michael Myers. It's Michael hey, Myers. by the it's way, do you know that that, that 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 cop that was leaning on the car with the blonde hair? That's the share, uh, deputy from part two. Well, it has it been confirmed yet? Because everybody's speculating about that because it looks like Hunt. I thought this was like deep faked. And it's the way, it's the catch lights in his eyes. It's the way that Loomis looks. There's a little bit of uncanny valley happening. But having said that, of course, it's since been confirmed from Christopher Nelson himself that no, it's all practical, all prosthetic makeup and everything. It's fucking great. And of course, this year, the classic cinematic tableau as we're pulling back. This was all in a soundstage, by the way. But pulling back, cinematic tableau low cut halloween kills and now we start our slow decline <laughs> no, no no well you know it's, it's, uh, but i like i like the opening um what did you think of the opening credits here and the opening uh music the opening music um the soundtrack i've listened to it a few times now uh, there's some songs that i like actually there's only a handful of songs that i like mm. um the theme I thought it was a little bit too soft, yeah, yeah. kind of, kind of melancholy. You know what I mean? Like I not, it didn't hit home like the 2018 uh, theme did. I got you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I don't know. It just, just seemed a little too know. soft. Maybe I mean, it was the really choir part soft. of it. The choir part soft. of it. Yeah. Oh. Just like, I don't know. Oh. I, I just, but here in the old score, like that right. stuff is great. I love that. Uh, the I forget the, the name of the title of it now, but the ending battle uh, theme when he fights yeah. the mob, the pumpkin uh, on fire payback. here I think is it's great called, too. I think it's called I think it's called payback. I think it is is the, na- is the name of the title, and that's a good score. So like, there's some good, and there's some that I'm just like, eh, yeah. you know. But like, you know, whatever. It is what it is. The pumpkin on fire here looks fucking fire Fire. it's great fucking love it i actually wouldn't have shown all the other pumpkins i just would have had this pumpkin you see on the screen right now i would have had that pumpkin on fire slowly moving up to it i i wouldn't have bothered with the other 11 pumpkins or whatever and i don't know if this is it would have made sense because that's where we left off with michael he was on fire right 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 yeah right right and i know i get the whole oh but it's supposed to represent the 12 movies in the franchise but why it's unnecessary according to this timeline there are no other movies (laughs) who stop it stop the ma'am it's it's unnecessary it's unnecessary i think these ladies are singing a uh song from uh carpenter's band back in the day if i'm not mistaken those three ladies on stage i like these two characters they're probably the most developed characters in the entire movie oh good night everybody i'll be here all week no uh, i'm just kidding calm down relax halloween kills fans are like sorry (laughs) what happened (laughs) I'm I'm keeping track of the World Series and the Braves are up four to nothing right now in the first. Ooh, the Bra- <laughs> hey, the Braves manager is is uh, is or the um, general manager, not the. Bra- the guy Braves the- are about to stick it back to uh, woke media and MLB for screwing us Atlanta people out of the fucking All Star game well, this year. The Braves, uh, not the manager in the dugout, but the the general manager or the the president or whatever. Uh, it, Alex Anthopoulos, he's a Canadian and he used to be in that position with the Toronto Blue Jays. So, um, I know a couple of people who know him. Yeah. He's a really, really nice guy. He's, he's the, he's, he, he, he came from the Jays to Atlanta and now he's leading Atlanta to the world series. It's fucking, he's good, man. It's good. Good shit. It's good for the city. I hope they pull it off tonight and fucking Burn the city, not burn the city down, literally, yeah. but party. Are they, party in, are they in Atlanta They're right here. now? Yeah, we're, we're oh, home. It's going to be fucking amazing. We're home. Um, 
So, so this scene, you know, what I mean, it's all in my review of the movie. It's all there. This is one of those, you know, I actually think Robert Longstreet is probably one of my favorite characters. I, I think he's a good character actor anyway. And, and I think he's probably one of my favorite characters in this movie. Um, with all due respect to Nancy Stevens, I, I just think she was done a disservice. I think her character was given, I think her character was given more justice, ironically, in Halloween H two O. Even though she died in that movie as well, uh, she it felt it felt like there was more for her to do. It felt more meaningful uh, in Halloween H two O. In this movie, it's just like it's a bunch of re remember her, remember her, remember her, remember him, remember him, and it just didn't work for me. So. Yeah, you know, as I said to you, I think it was in the text that uh, they could have brought Paul Rudd back and it wouldn't have really matter between him and Paul Rudd. I mean, honestly, I let's be real. All. I mean, There's he no didn't point. really br he didn't bring anything to Tommy Doyle that like um, that. I was like, wow, mm -hmm. great. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I don't know. Just no, I get it. And I, I can't it. blame I can't blame Anthony Michael Hall either because he's given a script and he's given direction and he's told what to do. So, well, of course, um, of course. And, and I just would have preferred that uh, rather than them all, all, all. And again, it's just a difference in creative choice in the in the writing. I would have if I was writing it and, and maybe this is a little maybe what I'm about to say is a little cliche for some other people. But I would have written it in a way where it is the events that are currently happening that bring them back together. I would have I would have not bothered, with all due respect to Nancy Stevens, I would have not bothered to write her into the story. Or if I was going to, I would have given her a more meaningful part. I would yeah. have not bothered to bring back Bracket. Uh, or, or if I was, I would give him a more meaningful part. I would have yeah. focused more on Lindsay and Tommy because they, they have that personal connection they were there that night i i even think lonnie Lindsay. i even think she Lon was great she was but i even think lonnie is irrelevant at, at the end of the day and and i would have focused more on on them and i would have had it's the events that bring them back together so maybe tommy lives somewhere else maybe he lives in russellville Lindsay's somewhere else and it's it's the event that's happening that brings them back together rather than already being there and i'm expected to believe that f this one event that happened 40 years ago that didn't really happen to any of them really i mean it did but it didn't and, and they're, they're still having these drinks once i don't know it just it, it feels like they're asking me to buy so much into the trauma of these events when only one movie happened you know in 1978 and 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 um um it, it's just it's the the deeper they they the the more they they ask of me to believe that the town has been tormented the less i buy it and and uh you know, I, I just would have, and the more legacy characters you have, the less you have an opportunity to develop them. So I think if you had just focused on Lindsay and Tommy, you, there would have been more breathing room for them to, to be developed. Yeah, maybe make the reunion or the reunion, when I say reunion, not their reunion, because obviously we're supposed to believe that they've, you know, they, well, that they the know each town other. Still. They, they still the, know they, each other. Everybody lives um, in the same town still. The, re I mean. the reunion of us seeing them on screen. Yeah, I, you know, I could have gone that route of making it more uh, intimate, making it more like them just getting together, um, you know, re you know, just whatever. Um, I would have had talking it that about Tommy, that night. I would have had Tommy at home. Uh, maybe with his wife, his kids or something, and he lives in a town far farther away and he sees the news report and he's fucking freaking out. And he's like, it, it it's like a calling, you know, it's like, fuck, you know, what the, f like, holy shit. And Lindsay, the same thing. Maybe Tommy and Lindsay are married, but I probably wouldn't have written it like that because nah, that's a I little on the gone. nose. Yeah, that's a little on the nose. nose. But both Lindsay and Tommy come from other, it's the event, it's the events that bring them together. Like how a funeral brings family together or a wedding brings people together. It's this event that brings them together. And it feels almost like a, like an Avengers assembling. <laughs> no, it's a really, I'm, I'm going to the extreme to make a point, but uh, that's how I would have done it. I, I think I would have done it more like that rather than just already know each other. There's no, it feels too disconnected. It feels too. Well, not necessarily. You know. I mean, small town folks, you know, I mean, that's a very common thing to grow up in your town and live sure. there your whole life. I mean, For that's sure not an uncommon thing. It's not uncommon. I at all. And I would have, I would have played it 
like that, that they're just, you know, small town community. They grew up in this town. Well, that's how they did they, play. They, it. They, they, they went through this horrible, but I would have made it more intimate. You know, they went through this horrible night together and, you know, maybe it's just the two of them. They're not in some bar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Having yeah. that moment. It's Could just have them, that too. you know, See, and, Lindsay and goes to Tommy's house, you know, or that, something that, like that. There you go. There you go. Now you're talking. Connecting. Now you know, you're talking. Connecting, yeah. You and, know, maybe, and maybe and, then they both see it on the news or something. No, I, I get it. I, I think it's, it's, um, it's just, you have too many legacy characters. You know, we all want to have a moment with them and we can't, this is a really I cool this shot opening. here. This yes, is a this great is great. shot. I wish I had the budget to make this into a photo. Michael <laughs> coming out fire. of fire. Yeah. Michael coming, he's God, coming so out. Great. It's, it's a bad, it, listen, it's a badass shot. It's a badass it really moment. Is. It is. You got to give credit. I mean, I guess I could fake the fire, but yeah. it just, no, I don't want right. to fake it. No, no, this is, this is obviously great. this is on a controlled sound stage. No, I actually think this is actually what they burned the house down that they filmed it in. Uh, it, 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 well, no, I, they did it. Cause someone just did a, a video. Yeah. They did I, a, I don't uh, think it's the same house. It's it's uh, I don't think this is a sound stage. I think it is. I, a, I, I, these kills are fucking great. He just comes like, fuck you. You're dead. They You're are. dead. And that hose is not doing anything. Like, turn no. it up. Turn up the velocity on that hose. And he just picks up, dude. Like, yeah. you're done. He's just going to town. Yeah, I, I will say this was really fucking cool watching this. And that, the silhouette of him picking him up like that. It's, I was like, fuck yeah. But isn't it, isn't it too bad that they showed this in the trailer, though? I don't know. I didn't see the oh, trailer. Oh, you didn't see the trailer. Okay. <laughs> no, I only saw oh, the that's teaser. Right. That's right. So that's when right. I'm seeing this, I'm like, holy shit, this is fucking yeah, great. Right. That's right. Yeah. Paid off not watching and not seeing anything. It paid off huge, huge. Yes, exactly. Now, uh, I do have a question, though, mm -hmm. <laughs> that I've been dying to ask. When did Lori get stabbed? Well, probably we'll just take it part of the commotion, I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, she stabbed here and she's holding herself bleed wet. Where in 20? I kept because I kept going back to 2018 yeah, yeah, yeah. and fast forwarding like the moments between her and Michael. Is there a deleted scene that I don't know about where she was stabbed and they just incorporated this and, and, and they put this scene into the movie? Yes. Because yes, I don't yes. recall where yes, she was is, stabbed. Yes. Yes. There is a deleted scene, an ending to Halloween 2018 that uh, that nobody has seen. Uh, there's a transcript for it, but yeah, she was she was stabbed in that. Okay, that makes more sense because I didn't see it in the movie. I'm like, where the fuck yeah. did she get stabbed? And just a reminder to folks who might just be tuning in again, if you notice a bit of lag in the video, it is not your eyes. It is not your connection. It would be uh, the connection of the stream because I'm using a VPN to access the film on Peacock because I live in Toronto, Canada, and I and we don't get Peacock here. So oh yes, that's, that's right. That's what you're seeing. Sorry. That's what you're seeing. Is uh, Paul Williams is right? He stabbed her in the. I forgot. He stabs her in her in her house in the bedroom. Oh, does that's he? Right. Oh, okay. There you he go. does before tossing her out the. That's right. He does do that before tossing her out the window. Okay. Well, that's good. That's right. Well, it's a good that's thing they have a stab right. there then. And she's in surgery. She's in surgery. She's uh, she dies. No, she doesn't die. That'd be funny. Um, I was hoping they would pull the trigger on that in this movie. <laughs> Everybody in the chat room's like, what? Uh, this, though, I will say this. A lot of the dialogue in the hospital, like uh, he's still here in spirit stuff, it just seemed very forced in the delivery. Dude, I didn't buy the, Judy Greer the hospital, comforting, comforting her daughter at all. <laughs> most of the dialogue in the hospital scenes is terrible. It is, And when I say terrible, I mean over selling it i cannot tell you how many it. times yes. overselling it very like, theatrical very stage play like it was as if the characters knew they were in a halloween movie and and they were you know just using all the cliche but it was just not you know it was just yeah oh this coming up was so great now this scene here this scene here according to somebody who uh is close to the production said to me that nick castle's cameo was supposed to be in the bathroom scene in this scene but it was what, the, cut the mirror the reflection i don't know specifically probably something to do with that but it was this scene here nick castle's cameo was supposed to be in the bathroom scene here but it was cut Apparently, it will be on the Blu-ray. Now, this is somebody who's okay. very well connected to the production and would know. Um, and uh, But all the breathing you hear in the movie is Nick Castle. 
All oh, the breathing shit. you hear is Nick Castle. It's not James Jude Courtney. It's Nick Castle. He went in and did some some I love it. When, it. And, I'm, and, I, and, I, and I am going to recreate this shot. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I am going to fucking do when he's just continuous, when he's making mm. his art with yeah. the knives and just repeatedly. Oh, yeah. Like I was like, this is like Janet in Halloween two getting the needle in the eye is the one that. It, it, it's the kill that disturbs me the most because mm. I don't like anything. Just, I just don't like anything near this area. It just, right. you know, well, this me is out. my favorite, you know, in my top five kills, I, I put this moment, even though it's two kills technically, but I, I, uh, combined it as one because it's the same moment. It's the same couple, yes. it's the same scene. Yes. This uh, is it's, definitely it, like, it's number my two for me. It's my favorite yeah. kill. in actually the, the film primarily because of how it ends with the shot of her watching Michael stab her husband in the back. It's yeah. kind of very, uh, yeah, the, the whole thing it's, it, 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 it was very intense. It was very, very intense. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a big fellow with a monster mask, the monster mask. Sounds like it's from New York. Bastin. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it's fun. And you know what? Shout out to the sound. To I know this is sound. This is going to sound really funny to uh, uh, the audience, but shout out to the. Um, uh, to the sound designers, they're, they're so important on any movie, but you know, the, the, the sound design on any film, especially a film like this with all the crunching and the glass and the, <laughs> like all that stuff, that's all added in. I love, it. he just goes right for the fluorescent light and he's just he like, does. fuck the knife. I'm going, I'm doing something different. He does. And Changing it up. Yep. Yeah, he smashes it, which changes the lighting, which is great. Right into her neck, great kill. I love how he turns his head like that. It's great. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a very sort of uh, it's 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 intense. It's great. All the stuff with Michael Myers, apart from the mob stuff at the end, the mob stuff at the end. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll but get to that. Everything with Michael Myers, yeah, James Jude Courtney continued to knock it out of the fucking park. But I don't yeah. believe it was James Jude Courtney. Frank Riker's in the chat room tonight. Frank can uh, remind me of this guy's name. I don't believe it's James Jude Courtney during the SUV scene when he's killing Marion and, and he's on top of the car and everything. I don't think that's James Jude Courtney. That's that other guy, not Aaron Armstrong, but another oh, here fellow. here we go. It's another fellow. Okay, now this here is terrific. The camera doesn't cut. The shot. camera is just turning. It's turning, right? Almost as if we are part of, we are somebody he's just killed as well. And we are sitting beside her, completely helpless, completely vulnerable, watching him do this, right? It's not cutting. And I like his look. He like pauses and he looks for yeah, a moment. He does. He's like, where do I want to put it next? He does. And that's he what does. I love about that. It's like a pin that. cushion. It's like a pin cushion. You know? Oh, I'm so. But just the slow track in on her face, and she's still alive here, folks. She's still alive, watching him do this. And then he and then he just leaves, and there's nothing she can do. She's going to die. That's the last image that she's going to have of her husband there. I mean, at this point, I'm like, wow, that that's really sad. That's very powerful. That's a that's that's an intense moment there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Race peace says uh, race peace says tragic part. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, so that guy who played the flashback sequence is Aaron Armstrong. Yes, but he's not the guy that did the SUV scene. He's not the guy that did the SUV scene. The SUV scene where he climbs up on top of the SUV, that's not Aaron Armstrong and it's not James Dude Courtney. It's uh, another fellow. I guess Frank's Frank has... Uh... Oh, there it is. D Douglas Tate. Thank you, Frank. Douglas Tate is the gentleman who I believe does all or most of the SUV scene. Douglas Tate. Well, I will say Aaron Armstrong is definitely number two on my list as fav of favorite Michael Myers in this franchise after Nick Castle. He just did. He did it so well. I, I think he was great, but I haven't seen enough of him to have him. I don't think his, his body of work is, is uh, big enough and vast enough yet for me, for me to in put him at number to two. Like, 
compared to like besides well i know jane everybody would say james Hugh courtney had more screen time but when i compare him to like dick warlock and george p wilbur and all the other guys who've played him he, he killed it and he did he, oh 100 he, he killed did. it 100 he did i just don't think he's earned it yet to fly up to number two for me for me but he was great he was absolutely great I like how they go back to this scene here. Barker is, my God. Barker useless. is a, oh, he's <laughs> useless. useless. He was useless yeah. in the first movie. He's useless in this movie. It looks like he's, I don't know. Has he put on a little bit of weight? Looks like he's put on a little bit of weight. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just me. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just, maybe I'm, I'm missing it. But Barker, and it's no disrespect to the actor. It's the character. The character of Sheriff Barker is useless. And as Frank always says, he's in fucking Illinois. What's he doing wearing a cowboy hat? What the hell Midwest. is this? Hmm? Well, yeah, I know. But, but in, in Illinois? Oh, yeah. In Illinois? If you, go, if, you, if you go out to the heart of the country of Illinois, yeah, I mean, it's, it's redneck. It's cowboy nation, man. It's That's, that's yeah. what it's like out there. And trust me, when I go out to the country in my area of Georgia, you see a lot of dudes. Well, yeah, but that makes sense because you're in the South, right? Well, but, in the Midwest would be the same thing too. You know, mm. Oklahoma, um, Kansas, uh, Nebraska, all those. And like as Illinois begins to get more into the Midwest part of it, you know, not the Chicago part of it. And that's what people forget. You know, Illinois is a big ass state and it's not just it is. Chicago. It is. Yeah. 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 I just, I, I but, pull focus the, there. The you don't see Michael. <laughs> no, the character is useless though. He was a useless stooge and he's a useless... I, I just don't understand how how he doesn't command uh, respect. He doesn't feel like somebody, a character that people respect. He just... He's completely in over his head. Julian's cameo, they had to show Julian's him from... cameo. Well, they had to show him from the neck up because he had grown sure. so much and, <laughs> you know... Probably. Yeah, that's what it was totally what it was no the guys the super chats are going through we're going to answer those after the movie yep yep super chats are going through dave's got them we're gonna we're gonna get them i got them we're just trying to focus on the on the movie right now because if we focused on all the super chats we wouldn't be talking about the movie necessarily exactly now remember folks people mistaken danny devito for Michael Myers. And I know, look, I know there's argument to be made out there that, well, maybe they wouldn't know what he looked like because, you know, you know, I think there's argument to be made on both sides. I do. I've heard both sides of the argument on why people could mistake in this kind of a guy, this height, his look for potentially Michael Myers. I've heard it and I'm like, oh, you know, there's some good points that are tossed around and I've heard some very good points on the other side as well, which is, come on, how could anybody think that that was Michael Myers? I've heard both sides. I, I think, I think there's a little bit of credence on both sides um it's just this whole subplot is just doesn't doesn't do it for me he takes his baseball bat the way marion here said i know it says love lives to i know and and she goes evil dies tonight oh god oh, it's cringy it's cringy poor nancy stevens nancy i'm sorry you get, i mean you know i know you got paid and you know there's no point. Look at Tommy. You know they're building up. They're building him up to be this badass. And then he he goes out like a chump, <laughs> big time chump. Yeah, <laughs> like he time should chump. Like the payoff for his character at the end just it falls flat for me. Bogus. T um, Paul Rudd's Tommy Doyle had a better payoff in Halloween Six, beating Michael with a pipe. Oh, Paul, I give you all no keys, bubbly smile, Paul. Brum, bum, 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 brum, bum, bum. <laughs> what the hell is Michael listening to? Anne Murray, that's who Michael listens to. He loves Anne Murray. He likes the Canadians. He loves Anne Murray. That's right. 
There he goes. There goes Michael. I mean, he had to change the record because that record wasn't playing <laughs> before. No, and that's they it. come back to the Myers house and Michael Myers found him an Ann Murray record. He's like, I am playing this shit. That's it. And Tommy's like, I'm going to get everybody. I'm going to rally up the town. You guys ready? Who's Michael? Doesn't matter. Just get angry. Why are we angry? Just be angry because evil dies tonight. Okay, I'm angry. Are you angry? Yeah, what are we angry about? I don't know, but we're angry. We're angry. Let's go. <laughs> There he is. And of course, this actor, this actor sadly passed away a few months ago in real life. Did he really? Yeah, oh. he did. It's unfortunate. <clears throat> Ooh, the red glow from the brake lights. Yeah, I'm evil now, bitch. I'm evil. Now. That's the trailer. Or that's, a, that's all I saw at the teaser trailer. Uh, <laughs> the pumpkin. Here we are being introduced to Big John, Little John. Big I John, have, John. I'll be honest with you. I have, I have a this on vinyl. The song I, that he's playing, I have that. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about these characters. Um, all right. They're I, cool. Well, but it just feels like, you know, I, 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 and it has nothing to do with them being gay. I'm going to get that out there now before, you know, somebody watching after the fact is like, no, you just don't like them because they're gay. No, it has nothing to do with that. I'm thinking about this from a character perspective. It's cute. It's funny. Big John, little John. I get it. It's it's kind of funny. You know, it's cute. But I don't know. It, it just feels... Um, it feels a little too uh, gimmicky to me. Um, uh, you know, uh, a little too shticky. Uh, you know, I, I, and that's kind of how I feel about this film sometimes, that the, the, the tone of the film is off. One of the arguments that people like to make in this movie is, is that, well, what do you expect? It's a horror movie. It's supposed to be campy. It's supposed to be this. Bad dialogue. Bad this. Bad that. Camp this. Camp that. Yeah, in a campy horror movie. But Halloween 18 was not a campy horror movie. They set it up to be very serious. And, uh, and now you're expecting me to just this... Tonally, is supposed to be a completely different film. It's supposed to be campy and cheesy with bad dialogue. No, that's not how it works, folks. There's got to be consistency. There's got to be continuity and consistency carried over well, thematically I mean, and in tone uh, and in tone as well. Not to talk shit about the original film, but totally isn't exactly Shakespeare. No, it's not. <laughs> you know no, I mean? I, no. Saying. But but that doesn't. But 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 with all due respect, and I say this, that that doesn't just because I like the original the best doesn't mean that 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 I would defend that. You know, I, of of course, totally, 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 of course, hundred percent, hundred percent. But that was the first movie, right? There was no movie prior to that that set something up to be more serious. And, you know, a lot of people like to, to, to sort of counter my arguments by saying, well, in the first movie, because they know how much I like the first movie. I'm not saying you're doing that. I'm just saying there are a lot of people that tend to do that. And it's like, yeah, I agree with you. There's a lot of campy. And, you know, Nancy Loomis is 30 years old and she looks like she's 35. She doesn't look like a fucking teenager. Yeah, of, of course. Of course. It's, it's cheesy. It's this, it's that's dated. 100%. All those things are there, right? Um, what's timeless about the original movie is its is its theme and and its execution and the beats and how it's how the it's its story in how it's told right not necessarily the acting you kidding me there's cheese in that movie like it's nobody's business um, but with Halloween eighteen it comes across as it doesn't quite know what type of movie it wants to be it's got campy cheesiness it's got very serious and then it's got this and it's got that and it's and it just feel to me it feels just that's why and i'm not the only one that feels this way there's a lot of people that have watched this movie they go what is what is this i, I don't know one minute we're doing this and one minute you know we're doing this and one minute we're doing this and and uh, and for some people it works but there's a, a a portion of people out there that it doesn't work for and i'm one of them i, I i'm a very linear storyteller i like consistency if you're going to tell me that you're taking your shit seriously then take it seriously that's why i didn't like peanut butter on my penis it's not because it's not funny in another movie it's just it's just like what are we doing you know i, I thought we were taking this seriously and um anyway that's how i feel about it, it, it is is that it's um 
I understand the argument of, well, it's a slasher movie. What do you expect? Yeah, if I'm watching Friday the 13th Part 4, I expect dead fuck, you know, because the whole movie is like that. The whole series is campy and cheesy. But 18 was quite grounded. They went back to the roots, and now you're telling me that you're going to negate that and go camp? Make up your fucking minds, folks. Anyway, I'll get off my soapbox now. (laughs) Uh, I like the characters. I thought they were good. That's it. No, and that's fair, dude. That's fair. I I, I don't not like the characters. Um, I just thought that Big John and Li- yeah, they were just a little little campy for me. You know, that's all. In a movie that I wanted to take itself seriously, like the first one did. The first one being eighteen, I mean. But I will say this: Tony and I will definitely agree on this. More Allison, please. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I love her in this movie. I, yeah. I, I love that they're growing this character into a Cindy Sydney Prescott type character rather than waiting 40 years to confront 20 years, depending mm. on which timeline you watch to uh, confront the monster. She's she wants to confront it head on right now. She's yeah. like, get me in the game. I'm not going to sit on the sidelines. I, I want to fight this dude and bring yeah. it. And, and I and I believe that I thought Andy Matichak uh did a phenomenal job she's definitely my second favorite halloween girl in the Mm, franchise nice after Uh, rachel after rachel and uh yeah i hope they however they conclude with her in halloween ends i hope they you know i hope whatever it is if it's what i would love would be for her to be the one to take out michael uh and the last one standing after Lori dies yeah Uh, that'd be great uh i'm hearing murmurs that she and Lori are going to die in ends. I hope that's not the road they go, no, but I doubt we'll it. see um, that it's Hawkins is the one who kills him. So yeah. Um, yeah, this, this Karen, however, that's a whole different story. <laughs> that's well, another, she's dead. Yeah. Now. yeah she's dead. She's now. Um, Good riddance. Bye-bye. What? Yeah, yeah. That what I didn't, I didn't like that from her. It sounded forced. Sounded it sounded too theatrical, too too what? much, overselling. What? It's like like I don't think you would. Re- I just don't think you'd respond that way. And how many times do we have? Allison, to hear you're too in this forgiving. Movie? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you're too forgiving. Exactly. He cheat. She. He cheated on you, girl. You're too yeah. forgiving. And how many times do we have to hear somebody say the words forty years ago? Okay, we know. We know. Listen to this exchange here. It just feels overselling. And then Allison, when Karen reprimands her right here and tells her that she can't go or whatever, she stands there for a moment, staring off to her right, our left, almost as if she's waiting for the tear to fall down her cheek. And then she wipes the tear away and then exits frame. It almost was like she should have exited frame earlier, but she was waiting for the tear. And it's like this kind of this awkward moment where it's kind of like, is the tear going to come? The tear going to come? There it comes. And then she wipes it away and and leaves. Let me know if you, if you get what I, you know, I'm talking about here in a second. But Allison is a character, more Allison. I like Allison a lot. You know, she was great at, at, at the end of this film too. She was great. And wait for it. Okay, watch, watch. She's waiting. Why isn't she leaving? What the hell's going on here? Wait, there goes the Well, tear. she's debating whether or not she wants to disobey her mother no, or does she want to. And that's prob- if I'm thinking as a director, I'm, th- I'm thinking that's probably what they're saying. Like, okay, mentally debate yourself in your mind for a quick moment. Do you want to leave or do you want to listen to your mom? For sure, for sure, I'm for guessing. sure. For sure, for sure. But I, I just, I, I'm, <laughs> I just thought it was funny when the tear rolls down the face. She wipes it away, and then she leaves. You know, I'm just bust, I'm busting her balls. I'm busting the scenes balls. But Tony's right, though. Yeah, I mean, for for that could be her motivation. Whenever you are directing actors, you always have to give the actors what their motivation is in a scene. So if the actor, if you're directing an actor to look around the room, for example, right? You walk into a room and you're looking around. The actor should then be say, you know, say like, well, what am I looking for? Like, what's my motivation, mm-hmm. right? Because if you just say, look around, then it's, then it's going to come across on screen that they're just kind of aimlessly walking around. There's no motivation. It feels too contrived. You always have to remember to give your actors motivation. What is the actor doing? 
You know, what is my motivation for doing this? And as a professional actor, they should, they would naturally ask that if they, you know, if they didn't feel that they got that information. So, so Tony's right. I mean, that, that, that could very well have been the motivation, right? That's your motivation to pause, right? Is that you're contemplating. Robert Longstreet is such a fantastic character actor, though. He's great. He's got all these fucking guns. He's ready, man. Why does he have all these Lonnie, guns? L Lonnie's loaded, man. He's packing, man. He's a, he's a good old boy. He's a country boy. Lonnie is packing. Why is he packing, though? Country boy. Country boys always got stacks of guns in their trucks and cars uh, country i don't know i mean it's it's country sure but what's the population of haddonfield well i don't know i mean it's a small town but it's not a tiny town it's got a pretty big hospital Hello oh she's ready let's fucking do this bitch Allison, 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 Allison. Some of this dialogue, though, is just funny. And Tommy's like, I'm going to rally the troops. Here he is. I'm going to recruit the hood. I'm going to recruit the hood. <laughs> in, in, a, in a small Midwest town in Haddonfield. That's it. The, That's it. The hood of Haddonfield. I love how Lonnie is drinking fucking out of a mug. Absolutely. Get inside. He's here. Half these people are like, what the fuck is she talking about? Who's here? That's right. Helen Park's like, it's America. America, land of the America. fat. No way. <laughs> America, man. I like these two characters. Uh, I forget their names now, but the nurse and the doctor couple. I, I wish they would have lasted maybe a bit longer. Except for the way Michael kills the girl dressed as a nurse. That was too John Wick for me. <laughs> Way yeah, too it, John was, Wick. it was it was a little gimmicky admit but but where did she go she just fucking left what they should have had was they should have had her fall out of the car hit her head and momentarily fall unconscious then she comes to she realizes her husband's being attacked or has just been attacked she gets the gun that's lying beside her and starts opening fire on myers but the fact that she just fucks off for a minute like oh, where did she go this sequence though is great with Lindsay in the park and then oh it's they, great they get killed i fucking love it it is great it is great i just want to know did she go to take a piss or a shit behind the behind the bush or something maybe that's what she did frozen fear who knows <laughs> watching a frozen watching fear a, Watching a big ass dude brutally kill people. But then she comes back like all John Wick perfectly fine. Run before he kills us all. A little forced. I would have dropped the all. Kills us all sounds a little too theatrical, a little too stage. Run before he kills us all. Eh, just a little uh, oversell. A little too Shakespeare. Sounds a little too stage play. I would have been like, just say, run before he kills us. I know, there are fans watching right now going, holy fuck, Dave, you're really, like, you're really, no, I'm just, you know, I'm just letting you know what I liked, what I didn't like, right? But I agree with Tony that this scene with Lindsay through the park is great. 100%. You actually have a little bit of suspense. Yeah, this guy right here, I don't believe... This whole scene here, Frank, if you're still in the chat, is this whole scene um, the Tate guy? This whole scene is Tate? Even when he grabs Lindsay and throws her up against the, the, the SUV, is that Douglas Tate, I think is his name? And why does Marion say this is for Dr. Loomis? What they wrote for her to say. I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> Tony Tony with the quip. I love it. I love it. I love it. See, this is what I love about Tony. He just comes in. It's, like, you know, it's exactly what I would say. See, we can bust each other's balls. <laughs> See, look, she's there on the ground. She and now she where does she gun. go? Oh, the scalp removal treatment of Marion. 
Come on, Marion. This is Douglas Tate here. Love this callback, Kill. Um, this hurt. is for Dr. Loomis. What? Why? What do you mean it's for Dr. Loomis? Bitch, you're going to say that, man? You better hope that that gun is loaded. Oh, oh, is oh. Michael wearing a blue t-shirt in that scene? Underneath yeah. the jumpsuit? Yeah he, yeah, yeah, he always has. Yeah, He had an, uh, I'm an 18 as well. It was blue? I didn't know yeah. it was blue. Yeah, like a, yeah. Ooh. This is like this kill I here in the kill. eye. So eighties. Oh, it is. It's like a Friday the Thirteenth kill. <laughs> yeah, I is. love that. I love it. I love how he's like, oh, 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 and like he falls back. It's. I love it. It's great. This, however, not so much. Hang on, hang on. Yeah. All of a sudden, she's the, coming from like, like thirty yards away, shooting. What the hell? Where Where did she go? Where did she go? She went to go pray. I don't know. I think she went to go take a like piss. this. Like, like he kicks the door open and he's <laughs> like, "That's that's too John Wick. That's way too John Wick. That's it's, not Michael Myers." It's meant to get a laugh from the audience. I or get a, it. Whoa! No, I know. I it get did. it. Yeah, it did. I think this is Douglas Tate, though. I don't believe that's James Jude Courtney there. I think this whole scene is Tate. Frank's not in the chat in the moment. And so. Lindsay, bam. Yep. Boom. Boom. Get See, those shots in. Lindsay has a moment with Myers. Yes! Look at this. Look at this. OG versus OG. There it is. You're remembering right now as fans. You're remembering way like, back to the 1978 her. film. That's right. You're remembering the moment. You're remembering it. Lindsay. The nostalgia is running through your veins right now. The, the nostalgia is seeping and this I through like. your blood The vessels. music drops. It's a steady beat. Just very steady. It Nothing. Is. They could have. They could. And the shape stock would have worked. They could have done it and it would have worked. I like that they chose this where you hear the the, the ambient sound of the crickets. You hear Michael bre breathing yeah. and just that subtle beat. See, MAGA Cat says, no, Dave, just to jump off the car. I, are you sure? Because I've heard differently. I've heard differently. I think there might have been more there. I think there might have been more there. Yeah, this, uh, uh, Tony is bang on. This, the dropping out and just this, this little beat. Hang on, I'm going to turn this off. And now this with the moonlighting off of her. Oh my god, it was so good. Oh yeah. Listen, listen. Listen, listen. Now this is Nick Castle breathing. That's Nick Castle breathing. Would have obviously, you know, had treatment in post production. This is genuinely suspenseful. Now, again, I don't mean like suspense so thick you could cut it with a knife, but in comparison to you know, the rest of the, this movie and some of 18, there's some suspense in 18 too. But again, you know, you often hear me say that it's largely void, not completely, but this is a nice moment. I wanted more of this. This Imagine this moment with Allison in the first movie when there's the shape hunts Allison. Imagine if it extended and she didn't go to that house and she ran around the corner and she was hiding in like somebody's garage or something and Michael was like stalking. This, we need more of this. This is Halloween. The way it looks, the way it's lit, the glow of the water rippling on the, on the, on the tree roots and everything and watching him walk across the bridge with his silhouette or his, uh, his um, uh, shadow um, reflection cast in the water with the moonlight, the cool ambient. Yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about when I said that I appreciated that more in this movie. You know, we needed more of that. More of that, please. Less of Danny DeVito, more of that. <laughs> oh, I better turn this down completely here. Oh. Yeah, you don't want to get striked on that because this is a new movie. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. will they will take you down. Yeah, yeah. Watch they get watch the algorithms are so powerful that from what I just played there. <sighs> Got gets cut out. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I bet you it will. They're going to be like, um, uh, Universal Pictures has figured out that your breathing during that moment is from Halloween Kills. And since we don't like Dave McCray, we're going to... No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not true. They would do it even if they... Didn't matter. Hawkins being wheeled in here. Frank? That's, that's your, that's the, that's the man. That's the man. I will say, though, why are there naked dead bodies in the hospital on display for everybody to just peer in and see? At least close the curtains. At least close the curtains. Usually the morgue Actually, in a hospital is in the is, is in the basement. 
I did ask my sister that, and she mm-hmm. did tell me in some ER because she's a nurse and mm-hmm. she works in the ER. Mm-hmm. In some situations, depending on the circumstances of the situation, right? If there's a lot going on, sure, that very well could happen. Now they're 100%. not there for a very long time, right? Just for you know, at, at some point they address it and get the bodies to the proper place, right? But in a chaotic situation, I did ask her. It's like, does that ever happen? She's like, oh yeah, it yeah. happens more frequently than you realize. But right. it's not like something where it's drawn out where people can just be like. You know what I mean? Right, like they're not saying, right. you know what I mean? Right. It just could be like, this is where they're putting the body temporarily until they move it to wherever they, it's hundred percent. And I can understand that. I think I would have been able to buy it more if maybe there were curtains there and they sure. had drawn the curtains a bit. And when Oscar's mom sees her son dead, it's only, it's not because there's this open window with her son just lying on a slab of, you know, right there for, for you know, nude for everybody for to everybody see. everybody to see. It's, yeah. it's that she walks past and she just happens to glance through the crack of the curtain and she looks through and then maybe there's like a classic 70s style zoom, you know, shot where it's like, and it goes onto the, onto the body. We have like a crash zoom onto the, onto the, onto the body. And, and it's, and she's like, no, like I could buy that because at least there's an attempt to kind of hide it you know but just like open like that like it's a nursery or something and i love this you know with the theme that they got the myers house theme how they how he how carpenter and them composed it yeah yeah. it's really good yeah this is another favorite score of mine in the movie doesn't last very long i wish we would have gotten more of it oh frank has said that doug was in every shot except on the roof. So there you go. Douglas Tate was the SUV Michael Myers. Do we know why, Frank, they chose Doug to do that instead of James Jude Courtney? I mean, that's that's Actually, not that's not a, a big deal because obviously we also know that Tommy Lee Wallace was, you know, Michael Myers in the closet scene, for example, right? So the dog, the dog trainer is the one who picked up the dog. Right, exactly. But do we know what do, why Douglas Tate did the uh did the SUV stuff? MAGA Actually, cat, I did. Oh, MAGA Truth, cat says no, I, I he wasn't. The, I did the SUV stuff. That's really what happened. MAGA cat says no, he wasn't. Well, you, well, MAGA cat and Frank will have to have it out. I did all the SUV work. I didn't there tell anybody. I wanted to keep it a secret. There you go. I got to hang out with Lindsey Wallace privately that day. <laughs> well, MAGA cat, much, MAGA cat, MAGA cat, I will say this. MAGA cat, I will say, if I'm wrong, you have to come now. Why am I wrong? Why is it wrong? Don't just say I'm wrong. Where have you heard other to the contrary? Is it something you're just taking a guess at? Have you heard Douglas Tate say this? And if you have, where have you heard him say this? You know, I'm not saying that you're not wrong or that you're wrong, but you have to provide evidence, right? So you got to say, well, it's because during a uh, JJC didn't want to sprain an ankle. Okay, okay, but but Frank says that it was Douglas Tate through through the entire SUV scene, and you're saying no. So where are you getting that information from? JJC said it. Okay, where Man, did he say I, it? I, I, if these guys are six foot three and they're jumping off an SUV, how the fuck are you going to sprain your ankle? That's not a far drop. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just saying like I've jumped, I'm five foot 10 and I've jumped off some shit in my right. time. Yeah. And jumping off a of SUV you know, when you're six foot three, that's almost like a hop. That's but it. Whatever. Well, this okay. here, I'll, you know, I'll tell you this. This is the, the best the scene. scene. This is the best scene. What interview? What interview? I'm, I'm not saying you're you're wrong. Just tell me what interview. Was it an interview, you know, or you maybe really you don't like remember. Scene? Do you like this exchange between Laurie and Yes, Hawking? I do. I, I really? like this scene. And the reason why I like this scene is because this scene here is uh, the strongest scene in the hospital. <laughs> No, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at what Wayne Downey said. No, yeah, no I, did this, not ri- I did not li- rip off her clothes. <laughs> this scene, Will Patton is a terrific character actor. Jamie Lee Curtis is a terrific actress. And by and large, by and large, not completely, but by and large, the dialogue and the acting in the hospital scene through this whole movie, by and large, is overselling, a little dramatic, melodramatic, a little too hot, a little too campy. And this scene here is more intimate. And these are two really good actors. And there's a saying in acting where acting is reacting. And if you have a good actor and you're playing off of another good actor, that you can elevate each other's performances. And this feels real. The dialogue feels real. I believe the dialogue. It feels natural. It doesn't feel forced. I buy into it. I think it's a great moment. I think it's the best moment in the hospital in terms of believability and performance and you're able to know a little bit of backstory between 
Laurie Strode and Hawkins. And that's believable to me because there's 40 years of shit that we don't know about. So she could have gone off and met all sorts of different kinds of people and had many different kinds of experiences. So, uh, so yeah, you know. Well, you could be right. MAGA says, I swear that JJC said that in an interview. You could absolutely be right, dude. You could absolutely be right. 100%. 100%. You could be right. Uh, but I know Frank recently met Douglas Tate, I think, at a convention, if I'm not mistaken, just a few weeks ago. Um, but you could be right. Maybe there's, maybe it's somewhere in the middle, right? Maybe the truth is somewhere in the middle. Well, I did this, but James did that, and then he took over here. Or who knows, right? It's too yeah, that bad. was just one of that was one of the scenes in the movie that I was just I didn't really care for. It was just like, eh, I don't know, the the, the just kind of slow, like took me out of the movie for the moment. Right, right. I mean, it's not a super bad scene, but I was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's what yeah, and there's Lindsay, and now she's wheeled off, and we never see her again. It's so until, unfortunate until, until ends. ends. Until ends. That's right. It's unfortunate that Lindsay and Lori didn't have a scene in this movie, but they're obviously going to have a scene in, in ends. I'm, I'm torn on, do I want them to kill Lindsay or not? Like, um, yeah, it's Lindsay. You know what I mean? Like seeing oh, Tommy right. get killed. It's like, whatever. It's fucking here, Tommy. Here comes Tommy. He's going to, yeah, but, but it's unfortunate that Tommy had to go out in the way that he did because Tommy, oh, I get that. Tommy was the one that, 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 that believed. Hang right. on. I got to listen to this. Evil dies tonight. He's fucking going crazy. Look at, look at, look at Barker. No control, no authority. He's useless. He looks like he's just a patient there with a cowboy hat on. Throw a gown on Barker and throw him into the, <laughs> throw him into the ICU. Well, you know, will somebody be, oh, now, now he's stepping up. Now he's stepping up. And Anthony Michael Hall is a great actor. Of course he is. But this just is, I'm just not buying. And then Brackett comes in and says this like it's, yeah, <laughs> line evil dies tonight take a drink every time somebody says evil dies tonight and 40 years ago oh you'll be you'll be puking about 30 minutes <sighs> in puking like crazy and here it is this is the first time we are seeing these two characters on screen together in 40 years this is the first time this is tommy doyle and laurie strode laurie strode was not in halloween the curse of michael myers this is the first time we are seeing tommy doyle and laurie strode together this should have been if you had gotten hey, rid of some of the it, legacy was characters it, was it the first time <laughs> yes it was i'm just joking yes it was i'm yeah that's right that's right i, see I just like how you're emphasizing on I it was am. the first time i'm like but, is it the first time <laughs> yeah but well the reason is is because it should have been more and this scene here tommy go ah uh, cringy dialogue there i just didn't like it. it and i get now i understand that yes Thanks to Cody Leach. Shout out to Cody Leach who brought it to my attention that, uh, uh, or actually it was a couple other people that brought it to my attention that yes, they all do know each other. And I found I missed that the first couple of times I watched this movie because of the bartender's accent and because of one specific thing that Tommy says at the end of his speech at the beginning of the movie. He says to Lori, wherever you are. And I took that to mean they don't know where she is. They haven't seen her in a long time. I understand why they got him to say that because it's a great juxtaposition to wherever you are and then you cut immediately to where she is, which is in the back of the pickup truck. It, it, it's, it's poetry. It's, it, it, it works really well. I understand that. But, you know, maybe, I don't know. I just, you know, and then the, this reunion isn't really a reunion. It's a, it's a reunion for the fans, but it's not a reunion for the characters. And I, I just think that if you're going to bring back legacy characters, you know, you got to, I don't know. I'm a nostalgic kind of guy, and I think I would have written it in a way where maybe they haven't seen each other, maybe not in 40 years, but in a long time. So there's there's more of a reunion. There's breathing room, you know? And if you ax some of the legacy characters and you ax this hospital subplot, you would have allowed yourself time to maybe do that, really develop the characters more, you know, really kind of tap into that nostalgia. Not unnecessarily, not unnecessarily. I just mean, you know, it just felt what, so what, hollow what and cold. Is this? I don't know. Is this... Does anybody know what movie this is that's showing right now in the movie? The movie that um, Big, Big John, John Little, Little John, John are, are watching. Does anybody know what that is? I feel like I know that movie and I'm just have I've been having a hard time placing it. Big penis, little penis. I mean, that's essentially who they are, right? 
Oh yeah, I mean the innuendo. Yeah, big penis, little penis, big cock, big yeah. big cock, little cock. <laughs> That's who they are. Great actors, though. I mean, like it, again, it, it's not that yeah, I, I like these guys. I thought these, I thought they were good. Well they were, written. I, they could have gone a little more over the top, which I'm glad they didn't. I'm like, glad all they this didn't. With Michael being at the house and, and kind of playing with them, I understand. fucking love that shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I didn't, waiting to see if anybody in the chat room can tell me what fucking movie. That I is just, it's been well, I don't me. know. Just seems a little too. I don't know. I take the shit too seriously. But Dave, but Dave. <laughs> folks, we are going to get to your super chats. So if you want uh, a guarantee that your question be answered, you can send those uh, super chats in now. We will get to them at the end of the movie. What's what's Mini and Moskowitz? What is that? Is it like a movie or is it? I keep I, some people are saying reality TV show. I don't know. I don't know either. Not it's sure. definitely not what I was thinking. Because I've never seen Minnie and Moskowitz. Mm-hmm. This is a sound stage. This uh, entire exterior and interior of the Myers house and the houses beside it was all on a sound stage in a building in North See, Carolina. I was wondering if they actually went to the Myers, like to the Pasadena no. house. Or, nope. uh, okay. No, this is, they built, this is a sound stage. Uh, they built this and the neighbors. Like if, if the camera right now were to tilt upwards and look up, you'd see the lighting grid. Lighting and all that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. They did a great job, though. I buy that it's out on the street. Oh, for sure. Yep. Even the d- interior design. Looks it just, great. Yeah. I will say this. It, 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 the real Myers house, like as a house, it's a small house. Yeah, it's smaller I mean, than this. It, it, you know, like the guy in North Carolina who rebuilt it, he actually had to make it a little bit bigger to he, fit to to housings for today's standards. Yes, and this house here is, uh, in terms of its size, looks more similar to the one in Carolina, the guy that built that yeah. Myers house. Well, they had to if they're going to film in there. I mean, the real yeah. Myers house is a fucking small house. It's very, very small. It's well, because it was small. built in the 1800s, which yeah. obviously they built homes, you know, a lot smaller back then. <laughs> I like how he's... <laughs> he just takes it off like, you're... <laughs> Imagine if he got naked. With that little knife. <laughs> I got this knife. Imagine if he got buck naked. I think I think what it is for me is, and again, it's just taste, guys. It's not right. It's not wrong. For me, I don't particularly like the self-awareness of the scene now. Now that shit's getting real, Michael's in the house, they know somebody's in the house. Instead of calling the police and leaving the home, they decide to throw little Big John, Little John jokes to each other. Big John? Little John? Right here? I'm right here. You know, and creeping around their own house trying to find it. Like, you know, if you really thought there was somebody in your house... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's, in, that's that's more real world than reality. Right, but right, movie, right. Movie world, no, you're going to go searching. Well, well, but not, not necessarily. I, I understand that there is a you level always, of that. In, in horror movies, you always go where the noise is. You never go opposite. Of the, <laughs> scream right. established that. Yeah, no, it's it's true. There is there is truth. There is truth in what you're saying. But it's it's the campiness of it that I just don't like. It's it's the the campiness of the of the whole thing. Because then we come back to these scenes, and these are supposed to be... You know, again, it's just taste, guys. It's just taste, you know? No, Dave, you're just so... That, well, that's fine. I, I, I'll do me, you do you. God, how many times can we hear that fucking chant? Lori should have said, evil dies tonight once, and that's it. There he is! There he is! Somebody catch that... <laughs> <laughs> Evil dies tonight. Just in case nobody knew, evil dies tonight. He yells it in passing. He's like he's it's like he's throwing a bomb, like he's a quarterback going back and <laughs> and now and now what's crazy about this is that doctors and nurses and security guards throw caution to the wind and they join the mob and they start running through their own hospitals, knocking over patients complete disregard for health and safety and it's like what real what i just it's too much it's just too much for me it's too over the top too over the top like i I like the principle of it i like the kills too of big john and little john it's a good it's a good suspenseful scene for a horror movie going to where the sound is to check it out and 
not go to safety. I thought it was a little, I will say, I like the gouging of the eyes. That was cool. But I thought it was a little uneventful how Myers just kind of came out and I don't know. He should have just, there's an opportunity here. Like why does, why do they just have him come out? I know maybe it's because it's a jump scare and I guess that's what they want. Yeah, but, probably a jump scare. Yeah. Man, they did such a great job with the set design too. Oh, it's fucking great. I do, I do feel like I'm in the Myers house watching this. Yep. They the did original a great job. Myers house. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They did a great job. Not the one they did in Resurrection. No. Which was also built on a soundstage. Now, where is he coming from? Because in the original film, Judith, that's Judith's room. Judith, yeah. and, Judith and Michael's room are connected. They're Jack and Jill's. Oh, oh right up the arm. Right You're up dead. the arm. He hears it. He hears it. Oh, oh, more, more, more. Oh, they should have stuck on that longer. The MPA. Probably oh, I'm sure the too. MPA was like, no, yeah. you got to bring that back. That's probably what it was. <laughs> So when you go into this other room over here, the camera tracks that's Michael's room, right where he's big, where little John's walking in. No, that's not. No, Michael's it's Judith's room. room. So is are there? But two... it would be in the in the original film. It was Michael's room that Michael goes and gets his mask, and then he walks over right. through a door into Judith's room. So there's something they they've taken some sort of liberty here. They have. Yeah. I do like the idea of the staring out the window and that sort of aspect to the mythology, but I agree with you on your ending is way better. Oh, yeah. We'll get to that. Just run over everybody. What? Look at these. Uh, the, yeah, just, uh, let's just keep running. Fuck this hospital. This mob. Look at these. Security guards are in on it. Lori needs some doctor here in a second. Watch this. Here comes a doctor that owes her money. <laughs> God, like just knees him in the gut. And of course it pulls her stitches apart. I like that. Oh, that would make sense, Jake. They took out the walls when they remodeled the Myers house That would, to open it up to make it more. I could see that, that to make the room bigger. Oh yeah, that's that a good make, point. That, that would make that's sense. That's a good point. A modern, a modern sort of uh, take on yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know if that is the explanation. The it could just be that they needed room to shoot. They needed the room because really, in the in the opening scene of Halloween, it's all pretty much a Steadicam shot following through. So you don't right. really need to show the space. Right. Right. Yeah. Barker's just a look at this. She walks by. She sees her son. Now, I know... Yeah. Why isn't his body oh, yeah. covered up? <laughs> Cover him up, for God's sakes. Lori. Yeah, that's right. She does call people sheep. Did you catch that in this movie? Yes. When they're, they're, I was like, okay. Yes. That's a, little, that's a little too on the nose. Well, it's Jamie Lee Curtis, little, right? It's a little, a little too on the nose I'm there. Tell, I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, Jamie Lee Curtis is very specific about what sort of thing she wants there's a sign do you want to know what's creepy there's a sign on the wall behind karen when she just ran through look at these doctors and nurses are fucking falling down and shit look at this all this kind of shit stuff like what like what, what in, in what look at this ah, you're, like, punching going on doctors are in on it watch barker's face here he's like ah! he just screams <laughs> Michael's masterpiece. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> I like how everything they assume that he's doing is not exactly what he's doing. <laughs> he's right. just off in his own world fucking killing people. Look and that's what I loved about this. I love how Hawkins breaks it to her here. He's not. He's not fucking yeah, he's after not you. going after you. It has nothing to do with you. Nothing he's, to do with he's you. He's evil. Like Loomis says, I That's knew right. what was living behind that boy's eyes. 
was simply purely evil. That's but it. What, but but you That's see, all Michael is. He's not going after one person. But what's and I agree. And what's so great about this is that I think that I don't particularly like the hitting him and him dropping to his knees and then falling down. I think this is unnecessary. I think you could have still had him standing there when Loomis walks up behind him to point the gun at his head. I, I just, this part here, I'm like, mm, you know, it just, there's Michael lying there all vulnerable and out. It's, again, just a thing that I don't think I would have done. And the cops are actually going to let a civilian. Yeah, I don't back know if, I don't know. I will say when it comes to Loomis in that moment, the only reason why Loomis shot Michael at the end of the film of the original film that I interpret it as he's, he's protecting Lori, yes, you know, to save from Lori. being killed right. to save Lori. I don't think in that moment he would have I don't Loomis would not intentionally kill someone. Right. He would he would kill to protect. Yes. But to in that moment, the, the way they're portraying Loomis is that he's now going to intentionally kill Michael. And I just don't think Loomis would have done that. Right. Because, you know, he shot him off the balcony because he was a threat. The right. fact that he's standing in front of these people right the now. The threat's gone. Yeah, you don't in, need to do it. In, in theory, in theory. Right, 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 exactly, exactly. I just wanted to say that, you know, what is so, it's too bad that this wasn't the main kind of anchor to this story, which is Lori finding out that it it's never been about her. It's not about right. her because that's really strong, juicy stuff for a writer because, and I'm sure they're going to actually expand on that and really dive into it in ends in the way that I wanted them to here. Uh, but it's fascinating because for 40 years, she has truly believed that it's always been about her and that he's coming after her. It's part well, of for her 40 years. We as fans, that's what we've been delivered. <laughs> you know? Well, I right, mean, right. No, no. But I'm thinking about it in the context of this, of this, of this, this story, right? That's the way it was written, right? She actually believes right. that. And, and what's great is that that becomes part of your identity and Hawkins, in a moment, the reason why Lori turns around with that look on her face is because Hawkins is slowly starting to take Lori's identity away. If Lori finds out the real truth that Michael was never after her to begin with from the get go, even from that first film, from that first night, what does that do to somebody who has invested so much time emotionally and psychologically into believing that it was always about her? She might have been able to go off and have a regular life, get married, have kids. Well, she did have kids. But I mean, like, have a normal, regular life and move away. And who knows what she could have become. But instead, most of her life, her identity is the crazy lady that lives down the street who's obsessed with Michael Myers and thinks he's he's just, you know, biding his time, waiting to come back. And it never was. When he was in prison, standing there on that checkerboard out in the, you know, courtyard, he wasn't thinking about Laurie Strode. He wasn't like, I got to get out of here and go back to Haddonfield and get Laurie Strode. No, he wasn't thinking of that at all. It was just circumstance. And that's... It's been her identity. That doesn't mean that Michael doesn't recognize her. That doesn't mean when he throws her up against the wall in H18 and he tilts his head that he doesn't recognize her. Or when he tilts his head, you know, in the window that he doesn't recognize her. But he's not after her. It's never been about her. And what that does psychologically to that character, stripping that identity away from her is really fucking fascinating. And I wish there could have been more focus on that. I just like the fact that they no longer made it about Michael going after fucking Lori and that we can actually break away from that in the Halloween movie. Yeah. You don't well, always that's... need that. I mean, we, it's been that story arc. I've had this debate with so many people, like how many fucking times do you need to see in a Halloween film? Lori Strode, a conflict situation with Michael. She overcomes that conflict situation. The end. I mean, like right, right. we've seen that story told in the first two films. We saw it told in H two O. We saw it basically told in H eighteen. I'm glad that they fucking finally broke the umbilical cord from that story arc. And to me, as a fan, it just opens up the door to say you could you could go in any direction with Michael at this point. You don't need the character Laurie Strode in the movie to anchor uh, a Halloween film, because when it comes down to it, Michael is evil. And that's it. it there's you don't have to over complex the character he's evil he's not going after this one individual he's gonna fuck up anybody who gets in his way and i just hope in future halloween films once we get past ends 
we break away from that. Give the, give the audience something new. I don't care what, how you want to introduce the character of Michael. You could still have the same backstory of him killing his sister, but you don't need the character Laurie Strode anymore. You can go in a totally different direction with it. And I think that's great because it gives us new material. And oh yeah, this dude jumping off the building. Yeah, yeah not really needed, but whatever. Well, this whole subplot here is, and, and I understand the social commentary. I understand. And I'm still not convinced that that guy in that shot down there is supposed to be a news anchorman. I think one of the camera operators is down there. It's just the rig looks too, I, I it doesn't look like, and I know that some people have reached out to me and said, no, no, there were people down there pretending to be news people and stuff. But where that camera guy was situated shooting the the mob, we actually have shots from that vantage point in the movie. Um, so I'm still not convinced that that wasn't a camera operator that just accidentally wound up in the movie. Uh, nonetheless, nonetheless, just wanted to get that out there. Uh, it's just uh, it's just the rig, you know. It's just the the whole the way he looks and everything there. It doesn't anyway. Uh, but I agree with Tony, and 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 I just want to say that this whole subplot, I understand what it's about. I get it. It's about mob mentality. It's about misinformation. It's about what can happen when you receive the wrong information. And, and you buy into it and then look what happens and look what you're responsible for and it ends up being, I get all that. But it, it's just, it's there's so much going on. The pacing's disjointed in this film and I just don't, that doesn't mean on subsequent watches you don't get used to it and you don't accept it. Um, but yeah, I'm just the... The, as Darren Sand said from the Slaughtered Lamb movie podcast, the subplot, it, it wasn't quite the Sartain moment in H18, but it, if you had to point to a Sartain moment in H18, that would be it. it it's like, t it just mm. takes the wind out. It slows the pacing down. You're focusing all this time and energy on this subplot that if you had removed that, think of all the time and energy you could have focused on character development between our legacy characters. You know, it, it would have been, it just would have been tighter, better, cleaner. But it's just a different, it, but it's not wrong what they did. It's just a difference in creative choice. You know, and I'm talking about it as a Halloween fan and as a as a filmmaker, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I would have done that. It's not it's not wrong. It's just for me, it doesn't work. Hawkins, Deputy Hawkins. There's Tony Moran. Oh, Tony Moran bragging that he's in Halloween Kills. Tony I'm Moran, sure. ladies and gentlemen. Sure. Tony Moran. Tony Moran going around. I am the Michael Myers in Halloween Kills, folks. Super Soul <laughs> Fry Disco says, how did Brackett go from sheriff to security guard? Well, the better question is, why is Brackett a security guard at the hospital? He's like 85. Oh, do we got another Halloween spinoff movie? The story of... The sheriff the Brackett it's, decline. It's called Bracklet. Bracklet. Bracket, a Halloween well, story. He's certainly not retired off in uh, Russellville. Is that what they say in That's Halloween it. for? Uh, no, Florida. I think he retired to Florida or something. Florida? Yeah. I forget where they tell him he, Loomis where he retired four. to. I think it was Florida, I think. Or California. Maybe it was California. He's going home. So, you know, we just saw Karen look at the mirror while Hawkins was talking about how Michael just, you know, wanted to stare at his window, all that kind of stuff. So it is set up. Like we do in that moment when, when Karen looks at the mirror and she sees herself in the mirror, she's thinking about what Hawkins is saying. That's foreshadowing. That is definitely setting up what is about to happen at the end of the movie. But there's a, there's a, yeah, the execution is, yeah. No, he's not. He's not coming here. See, I, I don't see any news vans, news anchors. I, I'm, I, you know what? I just got this. Feel. I know people have told me otherwise. People that were there on set, extras. No, no, there were a couple of camera guys there that were part of like a news crew that never made it into the movie. But it would not surprise me if somebody eventually came forward and said, yeah, that scene right there, that one shot right there of that guy. Yeah, that's a camera operator. Oops. Wouldn't surprise me. I love the narrowness of the street that uh, 
they they've set this in, you know, for for the filming locations. Yeah, yeah. Um, it reminded me of home a lot. That's really like a lot like what my neighborhood grew like growing yeah. up in Connecticut was like. Very small houses stacked on top of each other. Yep. And oh, here comes my Anne Murray moment. Anne Murray moment. Now here, I mean, Lonnie gets out of the car and w when he's, when they pulled up and parked at the side of the road, like th they're not actually outside right now. I, I think that street th w is, is all inside. Um, in Even when they drove up? Uh, possibly, possibly. Yes. It's a lot of houses to build for a set. Yep. You sure that wasn't in North Carolina? It, it could have been. When they, and then when they got to the park. It could know, have they, been. Absolutely, it could have been, 100%. But let's see here. Okay, maybe. Okay, so he gets out. Because you still don't really see the Myers house. No, no, not yet. But this here, that there, there that's you, they're inside. Yeah, there they're inside. Yeah. It's a big... Um, and yeah, I mean, that might be across the street. That could, that could all be a set there, folks. Because I know this is. And they built homes, like a few homes on either side of the Myers house as well to, to make it look like, you know, authentic. Why would he go in? Because he's going to kill Michael. Because it's a horror movie, Dave. You go where the sound goes. You go where the sound goes. He's, he's you follow the dot like, like the, what's his face in uh, Friday the 13th Part 6. That's right. Corleone or whatever his name is. Sh shebang, you bang or whatever. Wherever the dot goes, you bang. And he gets fucked up pretty quick too because they're not out there very long until they hear like a gunshot or something. There it is. Yeah, that's like seconds. Like what? Like maybe like ten, not not even 10 seconds. I will say douchebags douchebags kill was very gratifying. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cameron's kill was great. Cameron's kill was great. I will say that. Cameron's kill was great. See across the street out there? The homes? That's a set. That also could be a wall. Pain. Yeah, I don't I don't think it is though. It's not a backdrop. Like the lighting in here, of course. I really appreciate the the cool feel. Allison destroys a pumpkin here in a second. I don't, yeah. Yeah, Cameron's kill is great. Actually, this whole scene with them is is good. Like in terms of the, you know, the the building of the of the of the suspense. It's not it's not, it's not overly thick tension or anything, but it's, you know, it's it's fine. And again, I'm nitpicking here. The only thing I'll say about this display, and people have often said, let's not forget Michael Myers displays his bodies. He did that in the original film as well. So Little John and Big John being displayed, I, I just really don't understand why, because some people have been like, mm, like, I don't even understand why that. Why? Why? That's part of his MO. Like when 100%. he's repeatedly stabbing the guy with multiple knives. That's it. Uh, at the beginning uh, with the old couple, it's that's his MO. It's what Michael does. Yeah. This is not unprecedented. Although I don't think I would put the gun down and take the knife out. I, I don't know why I would do that. I don't think I would do that. But this is cool though. Like I like I like I love the look of that room. The way they lit that room right there looks fucking great. Looks like something out of a James Wan film or something. That's nice. Why why is she taking the knife out anyway? Like what would be the point of doing that? I, yeah, like I wonder, like just what would be the character's motivation to do that? Extra defense, I guess. Was there always a closet there at the back of the stairs? Well, I guess we don't know, really. We I never don't think really you saw see that. Enough of it. No, you're right. 
But I like this though. I do like this. I like the the way it looks, the way the closet doors are lit from a from a probably one key light off to the right in the other room. And then you got you know, the light from above. You got him there, the blood coming down. That could have even been digital. Just to make sure it lands in his hand. Probably not though. Who knows? Uh, and there's his dad. And then the way Michael just bursts out of the the closet there. I love that. That's good. It's a good jump scare. He looks good. Michael looks good. Oh, the way he just keep just continues to stab him is just crazy. Yeah, I guess she did take the knife for extra defense. I guess that's what she wanted. Well, this it doesn't. Oh yeah, yeah. And there she's got the knife. Okay, yeah. I guess that was her motivation. Little little sweet move. I like yep. how he looks at her for a moment. Like, I know, bitch, like, what are you doing? Yeah, like, like, what are you, what are you, what totally, are you doing? <laughs> totally, totally. She looks at him like, get the fuck out of here. You ain't doing shit. I'm going to tear you apart. He looks good. Cameron, you about to die, bro. Yep, it's over. I love the way that he twists his neck on the stairs as if to say, hey, oh, do yeah. you want to have a look at your dad? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes to town on his neck here. He's like... He does. <laughs> it's a, like I said, it's a, it's a great payoff because, you know, we as fans know what he did to Allison. That's it. So That's now, it. now we're getting the payoff. Like, yep, this is how the douchebag deserves to die. That's it. That's it. And Allison, I mean... Any match That's what I'm man. saying. Allison, man, she she earned a lot of points. She, she did. Up, she did. She moved up the ladder she of the might, Halloween. She girls. might be. I think she might be able to carry a film, Halloween film, for sure. It's possible. I, After it's this too is bad. Done, if you. Yeah, it's possible. It's too bad that when he start. That's a great shot. When he starts to come down the stairs, it's too bad they didn't have bum 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 bum. Ba -bum. Ding, yeah, ding, the ding, shape ding, stop. Yeah, that been, they should have had that. Been great. That would have fucking great. It would have been a great throwback to the original with Laurie. Yes, yes. Here, here, here. You want to have a look at your dad, son? One second. There you go. <laughs> and you're done. <laughs> oh, done. Done like dinner. Done like dinner. But this is a great moment here. And no, for those of you out there that think that Michael Myers says give it back actually speaks for the first time when he stands up to face karen at the door here in a few moments he does not speak he does not speak i took the audio from this moment i put it into my uh uh and i played around with it here in my home studio pulled out the frequencies listening to it on professional near field monitors i can tell you with two decades of audio design and mastering experience i can tell you that he does not speak there is no breathes. words. He just breathes heavy. It's breathes. He breathes heavy, and there's floorboards underneath him that creak a little bit. And depending on what speakers you're listening to it on, different speakers produce different frequencies different or produce frequencies differently. The monitors uh, I have. I'm loving everything. I'm loving everything. I'm loving good. everything. Then I know a little, little too much of his face. Then, then we, no, 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 no! I'm loving all of this. Oh yeah, yeah. It's what it's where it leads to that I oh, don't love. Oh right, right, right! I get <laughs> you. What we're about to you. lead to is bad. It is yeah. yeah. I get you. Everything is great. I love this. I love yeah. luring him out of the house. This is great. Yeah. Except the line, "I'm an innocent woman." That was kind of like not really needed. I does <laughs> like no. It's <laughs> like, it's it seems why, it, it seems, why do you need to say like why do I need to know you're an innocent? You know you're. It doesn't. It's on the nose. It's preachy. Yeah, it's, it's 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 social commentary. It doesn't like social commentary is best when it's subtext because you can affect people's subconscious that way rather than being overt. You don't want to have a. And now a, this is where I would have had Tommy jump out. And that's where Tommy and Michael start going to town on yeah, each other. Yeah, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be a bad idea. Tommy hits Michael with the bat. He, you know, maybe yeah. Michael falls back a little bit and stumbles. He tells Karen to get Allison out of the house and get her to safety. And then you get this last kind of shot of Michael and Tommy going at it on mm. the street. Karen gets, you know, Allison to safety. Cut back to Michael and uh Tommy going at it, you know, and to the audience, it looks as if like Tommy's going to get Michael, you know, it's going to have the upper hand here, but then, you know, doesn't, you know, right. and uh, Michael ultimately kills him and the mob. leaves him there. Yeah. See, this is like, no, because now. You, and the what, gotcha thing is too on the nose too, because right. 
like, yes, there's been three years between movies, but there's only been like two hours between the last time she said it. So I, I don't think, I don't think it was necessary. And sorry, well, before you continue, I just want to say this brackets line here. Hey, Michael, everyone's a title. Listen, from a fan perspective, it's like, yay. Oh, that was so awesome. We heard brackets say it again. That's so cool. Cause he said it in the first movie. That's so cool. That's amazing. But from a, from a character perspective, why would he say that? Is this something he says every Halloween? Like I always got the impression that he just said it to Lori because he bumped into her. Does he really remember saying that 40 years ago? I mean, is this something that, you know, Bracket says any chances he gets every Halloween, he he says to people, "Well, hey, it's Halloween. Everyone's a, hey, it's Halloween. You know, everyone's entitled. Hey, it's a, and I don't think that that if you were faced with your with the man that murdered your daughter, that that's what you would say. I think you would say something like, I'm, I'm going to kick your fucking head in, you piece of shit.' Or this is for any motherfucker or whatever. You know, it just seems a little too like again self aware that you're in a Halloween film. I get that it's cute. I get it. It's nostalgic, but why would he say that? He, you know, anyway, sorry. Yeah, Michael gets shot at point blank range here and he's been getting the shit kicked out of him. But your, but your idea was better. Your idea was better, 100%. So Tommy only hit him like once or twice. Yeah. And Karen has an opportunity to stab him in the neck and she stabs him in the shoulder. I know, it's a horror movie. But I like your idea better with, with how it began with what you were just talking about. Oh, with Tommy and Michael fighting yeah. each other. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Michael getting the upper hand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because you basically, everything they said that they didn't like about where the franchise went to, where you turn Michael into this invincible monster. You, that's what you just did. You just turned him. Now he's, he was shot in the shoulder by Lori at the, in, in the beginning of the 2018 film. Uh, the surviving the fire part makes sense. He's lost a few fingers. Uh, he was shot, like you just said, point blank range. And he was just beaten to a pulp that if you were supposed to make this character that you told us, this is what you told us going into this new run. You want to make him more human and not what he ultimately became. Well, you just basically throw all that out the window with this scene. Mm. There's no way, no, no, no human or no one who, and the, and this, the, the thing that I and don't like about goes this goes down, like what the fuck? Yeah. Like, Okay, when I watch a choreographed scene, I don't want it to feel like it's choreographed. It's and too you stylized. Can tell it's too stylized. It looks too choreographed. Like it's like when you're watching Matt Damon as Jason Bourne. Yeah. I don't believe that I'm watching Matt Damon because I know, first of all, those guys are rehearsing relentless yeah. hours to make that dance that they're doing in those fight scenes in the Bourne movies very fluid and fast. This you almost looks like it's just too predictable that you can see everyone coming and where they're going to be and how Michael's going to be able to stop them. Um, and like I said, you, you've now made him he's invincible. He, he's what you said you didn't want him to be. And that's why I'm saying if you had gone the road where I said, see, like with young Michael here reflecting out in the window and Karen's looking at him like that, I that should have been Michael looking at himself, you know, like after he you know, ultimately kills Tommy. Like, yeah, this is ridiculous. First, he's swinging at him with two hands like this. And then he separates himself. Like, yeah, why would you do that? Why would you leave yourself exposed to get killed? And, and, this, and that's this, the other thing. Like, you yeah. don't have a great payoff with Tommy and Michael. It, it, it's a Tommy gets in what two licks and that's it throughout this whole movie. He's talk, talking about getting him and stopping him. He gets two licks in and that's mm. it. I would have had a, like I said, a longer drawn out fight scene between Michael and Tommy Give the audience have it happen hope. in front of the Myers house, in front of the Myers house. Give the audience false hope that, oh, Tommy might get the upper hand here. No, ultimately giving, you know, Michael the upper hand kind of that gut punch with the audience like, oh, shit, Tommy's gone now. Fuck. Or maybe not quite dead as Karen gets back to the house, sees Tommy laying down on the street. She rolls him over. He's breathing heavy, you know, trying to fight for his last breath. Then Tommy's eyes begin to wide open because it's not because Karen, he sees Michael standing behind Karen. 
And all of a sudden you hear Michael breathing and Karen mm-hmm. realizes that Michael's behind her slits Karen's throat. Karen falls over cut to the hospital. You see Jamie Lee Curtis doesn't say anything. She just has this look of concern, like a motherly instinct, like, fuck, something is wrong. I don't know what's wrong, Mm -hmm. but as a mother, she knows something is wrong. Cut back to the Myers house. Michael standing over Tommy and Karen looking up at his room. And that's where you see young Mike, young Michael. Sorry, hang on. She can't she can die for shit. She can't die. We were laughing. Me and Devin were laughing. When well, we it's, well, like, it's, 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 she cannot die. It's, it's, but it's not her. It's the way it's shot. It's, I know. It's, it's, it's too stylized. Shot. Well, well, it's very, <laughs> yeah. it's very psycho esque. It's very old school, you know, and, and it's, but it's stylized. And, and, you know, I mean, I agree with Tony that, I, that I think there should have been a, f- and hang on a sec. Let's just get to the credits here. We're coming to the credits. Yeah. There it is. There's kind of a psycho moment. Lori see like this like well, Lori's look like she knows something's wrong but well, you don't know what and there it is halloween kills there it is ladies and gentlemen that was halloween kills halloween kills now before tony and i continue our deep dive here you know let me first say this that i i don't hate this movie i know it might for some out there it might seem like oh dave hates the movie because you know he's picking things apart i don't hate it okay i i, I don't it's new it's fresh there's a lot to digest there's a lot to let marinate sometimes when you watch a couple you know a film a couple of times you notice more things you don't like you notice more things you like you notice more things you want to expand on that you don't like you notice more things you want to expand on that you do like so you know again it's fresh and it's new right it's freshness too i don't hate this movie but i can't say that i love this movie i don't love this movie and i can't say that i just like the movie like oh yeah i like it i can't just say that and leave it there because there's there's so much about it that i that just doesn't work for me but yet at the same time there's a lot that does work for me in in terms of what i expected right you know big kills and michael and james jude courtney and all that kind of stuff from a from that perspective i'm looking at it from Mm. knowing that this is you know halloween kills and lots of blood and gore because again if i was making this movie it wouldn't be called halloween kills it would be something completely different right more theater of the mind but for what it is i like a lot of the things that they did so i'm very mixed on it i'm very it, it, it's still going to take me and i think it's okay to say this it's still going to take me some time to really let it settle for a while maybe over the next few months to where does this really sit with me maybe watch it again not on here but on my own so i can watch it again and see how i feel about it but um but to tony's point i mean what he's saying there is is was a much better more fulfilling ending i think if you had the you know it, it maybe the mob is out looking for um uh, no i wouldn't even, my, even have a mob i would just no but what i'm it's it's what, 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 what I want to say was the mob is out looking for him, but they're looking in the wrong place, right? And Tommy happens to come up to the Myers house or whatever, and then shit goes down between them there. You know what I mean? And it, it, exactly what you said. And your idea with Michael standing at his window, looking out at the carnage or looking out at himself, or sorry, it's six-year-old Michael yeah, looking out the of the window. Old, right. At himself standing on the street in front of the Myers no, house. No, not himself. I would have the six-year-old Michael just looking out. Like, because remember back in the beginning of the film, you have the two cops talking about how when he was friends with Michael, right. he would always go over to his house right. and he would just be staring out the window wondering what the hell is he staring at? The, the, the symbolism right. that I would have created is it's adult Michael right. looking up to the window of Judas That's what I'm Frum, talking about. Yeah, yeah. You see young Michael just staring out the window. I see. Okay. Whether it's a foreshadowing of Michael seeing what his future would have been like, right. it would have came full circle and it would have just had more of an impact on an right. ending with, with Tommy and Karen laying there on the ground. And this is what Michael is all about. He's, he's evil. It, it, this is what it is. But it's, you don't, you don't need to dive further into like, why does he do what he's, he's just, but he's it's evil. brilliant. It's brilliant, Tony, because you know, people want to know what, what's he looking out at? What's he looking out the window? We knew from Dr. Loomis, I watched him sitting in a room, you know, staring, staring at a wall, wall, looking past the wall. Look, you know, what is he looking at? What, what, what is he looking at? You know, it's like when we see our cat looking at the wall, like, what is our, you know, if only we could get inside our cat's head. Hey, wait, what are they looking at? It's brilliant, Tony, because, because that's what he's be- looking at. <laughs> because because he's looking at essentially nothing. And what I mean right. by that, what I mean by that is he's not looking at anything but evil. He's that's looking it. at himself murdering people. 
I mean, that's not, you know, not in a literal sense, but but it's the it's it's the it's the symbolism of it, right? So he's yep. staring there. Michael kills everybody on the street, kills Tommy, kills um Karen. Karen, whatever, right? And there they are, and he just looks up at the window, and there's six-year-old Michael just staring out. And it's true, it's like that. That's what he's he's from a from a symbolic standpoint, he's looking out at that that eventuality right that yeah. eventuality of what he be what he has become he's not waiting for santa claus he's not wait, it's not very deep and introspective and 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 you know philosophical it's just that and that's fucking frightening and that speech the loomis speech that part of where you're saying like i saw him staring past the wall looking patiently yeah. at this night I would have had that faintly playing in the background, overdubbed to the Myers theme, subtly uh, Myers house theme, yeah. subtly playing. And then as you're fading to black, the very last lines you hear from Loomis is I knew what was living behind that boy's eyes were simply purely evil. And as you're saying yeah. that you're zooming in on adult Michael and you're doing a quick cut zoom in onto young Michael yeah. fade to black. Because that's it. Cut that's to it. black. I said cut to black. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Cut to black. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're done. And you and you roll credits. And that should have yeah. that. And then you're like, oh fuck. Okay, here we go. No, you know? I get but, it, dude. I I get it. It's it's very apparent the symbolism and the layers that are there. You know, and that's cinematic language. You know, and and that's that's that. You see, that's subtext, and that and that that not subtext, but it's 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 under the radar, right? It's it's subliminal messaging, and it's it's cinematic language, and it's there. It's not overt, and that affects you. It affects your subconscious in ways that it that drives a feeling, you know, and you can't necessarily always quantify that feeling and explain it, but it's, it's, it's smart writing, you know, and, and, and again, maybe once we see Halloween ends, that that a lot of what you're talking about here will be the direction they ended up going. I mean, I so. may, who knows? Maybe Halloween ends will be more philosophical. As I've always said, I think it needs to be. It needs to be deeper. It needs to be more layered. It doesn't mean it can't have kills and shit. And, uh, sure, you know, of course. But it's got to be more philosophical because you, you got to bring it all home now. You know, if you're driving this, this narrative and all these deep messages about society that you're trying to convey, which I think for me is largely missing the mark um, because I think you're trying too hard in, in a lot of cases. It's just not quite landing for me. Um, now you got to bring it home and uh, make it more philosophical. You know, don't be afraid to do that. Make it smart. You know, go back to the way it was in 18. Again, 18 is not a perfect movie, but I think it's a better movie than Kills, um, in my opinion, in my estimation. Not that, I do, not that I don't have fun watching Kills. I do have fun watching Kills. There's just a lot of that hospital stuff that I'm like, oh man, this is just not working for me. Uh, but your idea for the ending is is uh, is great. Yeah, I, I wish I could have it's been great. in the, the the writer room and writer's room, or at least been you know had, had maybe been one of the first watch you know to see it and would have been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, no, maybe you should do this. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like to, to at least be able to present the idea because I just think from a writing point of view, the writers not to shit on what they they wrote yeah, yeah, as yeah. far as the story arc, but I would have just said, hey guys, this is kind of bringing it back full circle to what you mentioned earlier in the film. And it just, we know Michael's not going to die. We know that there's going to be a, a, another movie and this is, you know, boom, you know, this is how you should, you know, properly end right. it. And I think it brings more of a symbolism to everything that you discuss, you know, going into the, the, the final chapter, That's it. Of, you know, your trilogy, That's it. which I'm still really confused on, like, what's Michael going to do for the next four years well like you know unless I mean? unless i mean really listen confused on that david gordon green has said that no michael is still uh he's not he's not supernatural he's still he's like he's, he's basically said that so unless what they are going to do he's is himself? is that uh yeah he kills karen but he, he ends up collapsing himself in Judith's room or something because of loss of blood. And then he's captured and thrown into the hospital and thrown into asylum. And then Halloween ends takes place four years later with Michael locked up and Michael doesn't escape again. He just attempts to escape again, but shit goes down in the sanitarium. So he's killing people in the sanitarium. But then again, he, he wouldn't have his mask. He wouldn't have his jumpsuit. He wouldn't have his mask. Yeah. You, you know, wouldn't have the iconic Michael. Look, right. So, obviously, so either he walks yeah. off into the ether, but the, it's like, okay, he's now been shot in the shoulder. Okay, all right. You know, you can survive and that. He was shot several times but there in the mob scene. <laughs> right, right, right. So it, it's just that, but according according to David Gordon Green, nothing's changed. So I don't know, man. There's a lot of, I, I agree with certain people. It's kind of like, 
okay, but well, and I don't mind supernatural, you know, Michael get up from gunshots. I mean, look, that's what we grew up with, but right. that's not what you told us going into this run here. You right. said that's what this is. I'm saying now, if I were talking to David Gordy, right. Green, like, bro, right. you said you were going to make him more human that you didn't like the direction that H uh, Halloween four and five and six. Well, yeah, I mean, I, we get that, but yeah. you didn't like that because it made Michael supernatural. Well, that's right. You just, you just basically did that. I mean, you, did he you went back on everything you'd said that you weren't going to do that's what you've done he definitely that's fine right right yeah he definitely feels more supernatural than he did in h18 you know what i mean and it's kind of like oh yeah yeah you know, uh, some super chats. Let's get to these super a chats. A lot of super chats. A lot of yeah, super chats. Yeah, yeah. Cody Snyder sends in $10 and says, it's Halloween, motherfuckers, ready to cuddle with you all and watch a scary movie. Let's all cuddle in like the cuddly men we are. <laughs> Thank you, Cody. I don't cuddle. Appreciate that. <laughs> I he's, don't cuddle. He, well, he's just, he's, he's just fucking around. Uh, right. Appreciate when that, I'm on Cody. the couch and she starts to cuddle, I'm like... <laughs> uh, don't... Hey, hey, hey! No don't cuddling. you dare. Don't <laughs> no you, cuddle. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Bud Gumperson. Unless, unless it's my dog, Zena. Then, then that's yeah, true. you can cuddle. That's true. That's true. Bud Gumperson sends in, ooh, $6.66. I love it. Uh, two dudes. Two dudes dies tonight. Ooh, I love that. I love that. Uh, Gary Rangel sends in $2, says, Happy Halloween, Dave and Tony. Thank you very much. Reese Wilson sends in $14.99 Australian dollars, says, Happy frickin' Halloween. Happy frickin' Halloween to you too, Reese, my man. I hope you're doing well. Uh, fast forwards, $2.89, sends in $19.99, says, What's up, d &T? Dave, I couldn't catch your 25K sub uh, show live, so congratulations on 25,000, man. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that, fast forwards. You've come a long way. I remember the first video of yours I watched was the Halloween 5 destroyed the franchise. Oh, yeah, that was a few years ago. Yeah, that was a few years ago. Yeah, no, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. It's been uh, an interesting journey so far here in this world they call YouTube. Uh, new Nightmare. Hey, Nightly Gaimo. Nightly, one of the executive producers on not only uh, Never Hike in the Snow, but also it's me, Billy, as well. Uh, welcome, Nightly. It's great to see you here. Happy Halloween to you, my man. He sends in nine ninety nine. says, Happy Halloween, dudes. He says, I'm sure it's been said already, but evil dies tonight. Rock on. Oh, it's been said. Uh, Aunt Robbie sends yes. in 99 cents. Just sends in 99 cents. Thank you, Aunt. Appreciate that. Matthew Foresi sends in 9.99 and says, uh, what do you think about having Nick Castle's play? What do you think about Nick Castle play? Um, excuse me. Let me try that again. What do you think about having Nick Castle play the mental patient instead of the guy who looked like Danny DeVito? I saw that suggested somewhere. Do you think that's a good idea or two on the nose? I actually think that's a terrific idea. I think that would have been, if Nick Castle was up for it, have him play the mental patient. I think that would have been amazing. What do you that think? Would have been cool. Yeah? Yeah, that would have been cool. I mean, it's, it's a different character. He's not playing Michael. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I thought that, you know, yeah, I thought that would have been totally fine. That would have been fun. That would have been cool. Yeah, absolutely. That would have been cool. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it would have been even more hilarious if Michael killed him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Can you imagine? Wait, Michael uh, killing him. Michael? What? Yeah, that that's that's meta right there. That's like, what? What am I watching? This is so weird. Uh, Will Myers sends in four four nine nine. Just says, "Happy Halloween, guys! Happy Halloween to you too, Will." Mm two four just sends in ninety nine cents. Thank you very much. And then he follows up with a four ninety nine one and says, "Did you guys see that Tony Moran um, officiated?" A wedding at a haunted house as Michael. Yes, that was a while ago. I, I I did see that. That was something he was doing. He was taking like orders for that kind of shit a few years ago. I don't think he's doing that anymore unless he started it again. I don't know. We all got to earn a living, right? Oh, uh, that's true. Uh, Michael Peacock. <laughs> Michael Peacock. Is that really your last name? Peacock? We're watching on Peacock. That's amazing, dude. Uh, 4 dollars He says, do you think they will re-edit Halloween Kills for the Blu-ray, cutting down some of the cringy dialogue? No. No. If anything, they'll add more. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's it's locked. It's locked. Yeah, it's there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, KC sends in four ninety nine and says, Bracket never spoke to Lori. It's true. Old characters had really no effect in this movie. Flashback is better than Halloween 6, though. Uh, oh, the entire flashback of this movie is better than all of Halloween's... Uh, yeah, I'd agree. <laughs> I'd agree. From a purely fan, nostalgic feeling like a kid my god it's nice a hundred percent could not agree more and um yeah bracket and laurie never had a scene and if bracket is dead like laurie and Lindsay never had a scene either but there's still time for them to have one in halloween ends now we know that 
bracket, although he was sliced in the neck, I guess you could pull a Hawkins and bring him back. But like, what the hell is this, Marvel? Um, I think bracket is probably dead. And that's unfortunate that we never got a scene with him and Laurie. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate. Would you like to have seen a scene with him and Laurie? I think that would have been cool. That would have been cool. Um, yeah, I mean, even if it, a brief moment, you know, you brought all these legacy characters back. Yeah. Um, and you really, the only reunion we saw was Tommy and Laurie. Well, for us, it's a reunion, but for them as characters and right. the story, they've obviously they've been in each other's lives yeah. all these years. Um, it was just, and I, and I understand why they probably just went through the, the, the Tommy and Lori route because in the original Lori babysits Tommy and Andy oh, for babysits. sure, I, that so is there's, the... there's no tight connection that we see in the original film between Z, except when Lindsay eventually ends up at the Doyle house at That's the right. end. Um, but the more we see, you know, we see a lot more in the original film of Tommy and Lori, you know, walking to school, and yes, all that, and then yeah. babysitting him and talking to him on the couch and all that stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so I get that part of it. Um, so hopefully we get whatever we get in ends. Uh, hopefully we get a lot, like I said, I'm still on the fence on right. how, 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 you know, do I want to see, Lin there's a part of me that like, I will understand if they kill Lindsay off, but right. it's going to suck too at the yeah, same yeah, yeah. time. Cause again, um, for the brief moment that we got with Lindsay in this film, it was great. I, w I wanted more. So I hopefully we get a lot more of her right. uh, in ends and, you know, whatever is whatever. I mean, I get it. If they, if they pull the trigger on it and kill her, I understand. I'm hoping they don't. But yeah, we'll same. I'm actually hoping they don't either. And, and, and I agree with everything you've said. I, I, I think that I understand that what I wanted to see from these legacy characters and what I wanted to see from a Tommy Doyle, Laurie Strode is a different movie. It's a, it's a different, like you, you, you couldn't take what I wanted to see and just, you know, shuffle a couple of things and plop it in there. It, it wouldn't work. You wouldn't have the time to do it. And like Tony pointed out, you know, it's clear that they've, they know, they already know each other and, you know, it's not like they see each other every day, but certainly they know each other. They, they've, been in each other's lives, uh, at least often enough that they're, they're friendly, you know? And, and so, you know, what I, I just would have written it differently to mm -hmm. allow the characters, the events of 2018, the events of this night brings them back into each other's lives rather than them being already in each other's lives. These events or the event bring them back into each other's lives. And I would have negated some of the characters because the more legacy characters you have, like I said, the more screen time you got to give. And I think it's better that if you just have a couple, I, I would have had Lori, Lindsay and Tommy, and that's it. I don't even think I needed, I'm not Lonnie, I don't think you we really needed him. really don't need Brackett or uh, Marion. No, you don't. You know I mean? And, you and really there's no don't. disrespect to them. We're just talking about story because because it, it all, like Tommy was the one. It comes one back that, to those three in the end. Right. I mean, it really and, does. Right. And when you, when you think of Tommy Doyle, right? Tommy Doyle was the one that convinced Laurie Strode the boogeyman was real. And, you know, because at the end of the original film, what does she say? It was the boogeyman. As a matter of fact, it was. W with her saying it was the boogeyman, she's going, it was the boogeyman. Like she's saying it like that. The emphasis is on was, right? So she, what she is saying there is, holy fuck, Tommy was right. It was the boogeyman. That guy they saw, it was the boogeyman. So this this Tommy Doyle thing is, is it would have been nice to nurture that, to noodle that a bit more and nurture that and have them, I just wanted more breathing room with these characters. I wanted more nuance and breathing room with a reunion with these characters. But in order for that to happen, the film, this that would have had to have been written completely differently. It's not something you could throw in there uh, um, as is because it wouldn't make sense. So well, not um, only that, the last time we see the three of them together was when they're at the top of the stairs, and right, she tells them to go down to the to uh, what's it, the McKinsey's Wallace's no McKinsey's house, the McKenzie's house, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's the last time we see those three characters together. Yeah. So yeah. it would have been cool to see the three of them you know, brought back together in this film. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. And, 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 and for me, others can disagree. It's totally cool. I understand that. It's just a difference in creative opinion. 
like I said, just to emphasize, I would have had the event, the events of this night is the reason that brings them back, that that brings them back into each other's lives. I think that would have been cool. I think that would have been cool. But anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, did, 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 did Michael Peacock got uh, KC. Bracken never still spoke to Lori. The Dark Light, the Dark Light, sends in $2 and says, why are Marion and Brackett sitting the whole film? Well, probably because they're fucking old. Uh, you know, no disrespect to the actors, but you know, you're on your feet a lot. I mean, it's probably... You know, I mean, but but I'm being dead serious. It, it it probably is a situation where you are allowing these actors who are of a certain age uh, to you know allow them to sit. You know, <laughs> that's probably why. Bracket does walk around a little bit though, little but bit. that's probably why. Uh, Joe Smite John Jr. I think I said it right this time. I think uh, five dollars. As I asked earlier, didn't get an answer. Uh, wrong mask. Do you guys like better the flashback one or the decay mask? You asked earlier. I didn't see it. Um, was that the super chat that came in last week before we when we signed off? Remember? Oh, remember maybe that? it was. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. Yeah. Try not to send super chats in after I go. Well, folks, and you hear this? Oh wait. You hear that? Yeah, Try not to send super that. chats in after that because then it's like it throws every you know, save it for next uh, week. Uh, maybe it was, maybe it was. So let's answer this here. Um, I asked earlier wrong, uh, didn't get an answer. What mask do you guys like better, the flashback or the decayed mask? Well, I think I like them equally for two different reasons. You know what I mean? I, I think Christopher Nelson did a, ter and his team, he's got a team. It's not all him. It's not, you know, he's not a one man show. He's extremely talented and he's, he's the head honcho of course course of of his uh, of his company but uh certainly he has a team um i think him and his team did a terrific job on the uh on the flashback mask uh i you know obviously it doesn't look identical but you know what as christopher nelson would often say shut up and eat your popcorn um it it looks fine <laughs> it, it looks great you know um it's totally great uh and the totally. Yeah, totally. It's totally, 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 totally. totally, totally. totally. Um, totally. And the kills mask being kind of charred on one side. I thought it was great. And, and there was some great shots of the mask in this movie. Maybe we saw him a little too much, maybe, but uh, certainly the mask does look awesome. What do you think, Tony? Um, flashback mask yeah. kills or the modern mask. But, I both. mean, I, obviously the flashback mask is, is as good as we're ever going to get when it comes to the OG, uh, 78 mask. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's unfortunate though, that that flashback mask wasn't the mask they used in four and especially four. If that was the four. If that was the four mask four would arguably, you almost couldn't have an argument on that being one of the best sequels of the franchise because the number one complaint that people have, you know, is Michael's mask. And I, 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 you know I what get it's, it. I, it's, it's I true. Understand. It's true, Tony. You bring up a good point. You know, it, it really, yes, we can complain about the shoulder pads and maybe, you know, Wilbur's a little stiff, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Tony's right. The big problem people have with four um, is the mask is, is, is they the love mask, the story yeah. they love the ending it's a great halloween sequel yeah um you, you you know you do suspend your disbelief michael surviving the explosion and yeah, all that yeah. stuff like that look it's hollywood it's a movie we get it yeah um but as far as just from a sequel if if that was the mask that they had yeah. masked they had used for halloween 4 and and, and even h2o for that matter oh, yeah. um but definitely four it just it, i'm hoping someone out there with because of technology, i hope so with technology i'm hoping someone does a, a deep fake and really does a great job of i've of been fixing dude, of fixing that mask in four yes just, just i'd love to just see it you know we, yeah. we, we got the technology yeah there's really no reason why you can't do that at this point it's true dude i would love to see it i, would I mean they really could I and mean, then and, it would probably be taken down. It, it would probably be taken down by Trankus. They'd probably like. I'm almost that. hoping Trankus might say, "You know what? Why not? Why don't we just do it? <laughs> like, <laughs> let's just do it. Let, let's do amazing. it." You're in, you're in the business to make money. If it look, if 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 you tell me, you know that you are going to re-edit this. With, Can with this you team imagine and release a new version of Halloween Four by fixing the mask? <sighs> Money, 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 money. I buy that like 10 times over. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Like, oh. yeah, give me, take my money, <laughs> take it. Huge. And, take and, it. but, but, but on one condition, it has to look 
the as composite well as- job. No, the yeah. the composite job that they do, the deep fake or whatever they do, has got to look legit. Like, like butter. Like yeah. butter. Like I can't tell in any, through, mo- like it, it's one thing to do it in a still shot, but when he's walking through the space or turning his head or whatever, I don't want to see any, oh, oh, it's kind of, no, 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 no. It's fucking flawless. There's not a lot of scenes where that mask is up close. I mean, yes, you do see a lot of it in the end, um, but it, yeah. it's not something that would be that hard to do. Like mm. I said, with techno and who knows where this technology is going towards, like in 20 years from now, that might be just like a simple push of the button and they're able it's to possible. do that. Um, it's but that, yeah, but as far as the masks go, I mean, and you know, um, I, I like the weathered mask look, but, but I gotta tell you what I'm having made right now. I think mm-hmm. you guys are going to go sp- I, th- I think people are going to spaz over it when I do my photo shoot here in mid-November. Um, Dude, I can't mask, wait to see it. Yeah, The mask that I'm using right now and the most recent photos, I call that my version of what H2O should have looked like because okay. it's not quite, it's not 40 years, but if you if you look at some of the photos, you see that it's it's been beaten. It's dirty. Right, um, right. It, it's not as clean and, and fresh like it would in the 78. And right. that's how I asked my guy to do that. I said, look, give me something like in that 20 year ramp. And now I told him, look, take that same idea of that mask right there. But now bring it to 40 years, but not looking like H. Like you said, what Christopher Nelson and those guys did, I thought they did a great job. Great with it. job. But I think I would have taken it. I think when you see what I do, I think everyone's going to be like, that would have been butter if they had gone that road. Mm. The burn part, I mean, that's cool. That's just, it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. Burned. It, it is. Fascinating. But yeah. That flashback mask is. It's good. It's, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah. I'm debating on if I want to buy it. Is, is, is Trick or Treat Studios releasing it? No, well, they probably, God, they probably will. They probably will. Come yeah. on, come on. Yeah. Money, right? Not yet, of That's course. Uh, uh, let me see here. The is in Ragnar found a Douglas mask. Diehard Drummer eighty four sends in four ninety nine. Says it would have been cool for the couple to fly a drone outside with a cam on it, so you see the POV on. TV. Michael knocks it down as it takes off before mayhem. It's at night. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. I mean, I it's, I, it's at night. You can't really get good drone footage at night. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. But but I I I, I get what he's saying. I get what he's saying. Um, or not just even TV. They just fly it outside, and all of a sudden it turns Let around. Let me take and, that back because I know what's coming. Okay, you can get good drone footage if you're in a city and you got lights that, that can is provide true. you the lighting. Yes, I get it. If you live in yes. Toronto or and New depend- York, or but I, also I, depend- I get that. I'm talking like out in the country where there's yeah, no yeah, yeah. lighting. You're not gonna get shit. <laughs> right, and but it also depends on the the camera and the lens, you that know, too. as well, right? That's and how much light yes. how much light it allows in too, right? So because there's very I can see the comment coming. Drones. Oh, that's not true, Jody. I, I can know. get it with this. I'm like, I yeah, know. I know you can. If you live in the city, I get it. You, yeah. you get but it. But I, I, I get what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of cute. You know, yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, the Dark Light sends in five, the Dark Light again, sends in $5, says they jump four years in HN so they can have an excuse for a helped, for a healed up Lori to be in it. Abandoned Lori at the hospital and Michael didn't stalk her. Uh, well, that definitely is a, uh, that's a, res- that's, that's a, that actually helps. I don't think that is the reason they jumped four years. Um, because let's not forget that the, the, the original idea was all three films were going to take place in the same night. On the same and, night. Right. Which and I actually thought was great. I did too. And then COVID happened and there was a year delay and they had a chance to reevaluate things, go over scripts, talk, which, you know, happens the more time you have, the sometimes that can be better for your film. Sometimes it can be worse because you can overthink shit too. But nonetheless, they they had changed it. So the script that they, the Halloween ends that we're going to see next year is not the same Halloween ends that we would have seen. So, um, and we know that it's jumping four years. It's a post-pandemic world. They're going to acknowledge that. They're gonna, I mean, so I don't know what this is going to be. I mean, certainly it's a, yes, by jumping ahead, four years you allow everybody to heal so i mean you know psychologically emotionally physically um you know so i hope they i just want to see halloween ends slow it down go back to what you had with 18 
right? Go back to a smaller, more intimate film, which I think they are. I think that's the idea. David Gordon Green has said that it is more, it's more intimate. And I believe he even said on a panel about a month or so ago at a screening of Halloween Kills, he said something to the effect of it being more of a coming of age story. So that, I, I like hearing that because that tells me that there's going to be what? Character development. Character well, development. And hopefully seeing Allison, in, in, when I think of coming of age with her character, seeing, because she's a high school kid, right? She's playing a high school kid. Right. Um, becoming the woman, becoming the final woman of this. Right. Like, that's right. what I'm hoping. That, that's right. where this trend... That right. Transcends whatever, you know. No, like. I, I know what you're saying. Dude, I know what you're saying. Slow it down. Go back to the more of that nuanced feel of, of 18. And Halloween Ends doesn't have to be fucking spectacular. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I mean, listen, if it is, great. But it doesn't have to be. It's just got to be good, you know? And listen, some people think Halloween Kills is really good, like you. And, and, yeah. and, and I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's bad. But I think 18's a better movie, in my opinion. Um, and I can have fun with Kills, for sure. But I think 18 overall, structurally, script, dialogue, pacing, all that, is just better. Um, but Ends, for me, for me, Ends doesn't have to blow me away it's just gotta be good you know it's just gotta be good it's like ah that was good that that was a good you know okay cool 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 um so just go back to what you had with 18 and and i think that uh yeah just make it i, you know, I just hope they more really, intimate smaller i i really hope they don't like the covid thing if i i don't want it to be an undertone if it's whatever briefly mentioned yeah. i guess i i don't even want it the, the re <sighs> The reason why I don't want it mentioned is, as I said last week, and I'm going to say this now a little bit more calmer, um, <laughs> is because when now we that go he's to had the, a few beers, no, no, I'm just kidding. right. No, well, no, it's just because when we go to the movies, we go to the movies to be entertained. We know this is make believe. This is not real world. You don't need to set Halloween in real world because none of this exists. This isn't right. real. So to put it to put COVID in there, even if it's briefly like now you're trying to tell me that this is real world. And I'm afraid with just you just I get it where I, if this could end up being disastrous if it goes in a direction of. I mean, I hate to use the word wokeness because right. I just, I hate saying it. I'm, no. I feel like I'm just that old guy trying yeah, to be cool like and say a, right. like a young, you know what I mean? Like it's not yeah, my yeah. generation word, but to use the word, okay. Yeah. In context of what I'm trying to explain, I hope they don't go that far with Halloween ends because again, at the end of the day, this is, you know, like the article that came out this week that regarding the two gay men and Michael Myers, right, like, right. you know, in, in all the conversations that I've had over 30 years of this franchise and, and being a fan of this franchise, I never thought I'd be sitting there with my mother the other night and going, you know, there's an article out there about Michael Myers being homophobic. Like we're going to like places of a ridiculous, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, like, I agree. I, and I, I hope totally they agree. just don't go there with this because- right, right. You, if they do, I'm telling you guys this right now, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a signed seal agreement. If they go that far with this, my ass is gonna go out and buy the VHS copy of Halloween Resurrection because yeah, it yeah. no longer is the worst movie in the franchise. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, Tony, I agree. I, I, and, 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 you know, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Tony knows this too. You know, social commentary in horror movies is nothing new, it's nothing new. Sometimes it can be subtext. Sometimes it can be very overt, like uh, in the case of, say, like Get Out or Us. That's very overt. It's very clear what those messages are. And sometimes it can be, you know, subtext under the radar, right? Social commentary has been in horror movies for decades and science fiction movies about society and life and who we are and sure. all that kind of stuff. But... Yeah, well, uh, didn't... Um, not to cut you off, but didn't... Um, um, Oh my God, the director of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm drawing a blank on his name. Toby, Toby. Hooper. Hooper, thank yeah. you. D didn't he use the Vietnam War as kind of an inspiration for that and shit that was going on? I don't that know. That's a good question. I, I, I'm not I sure. think he did. But okay. anyways, go on. Yeah, no, but so it, it's not like, you know, social commentary, I think, can be very effective, you know, but it's it's a real art form to be able to write a story. And I don't claim to be somebody that can do this. I mean, I, I would like to think I'm a pretty 
smart guy, but I don't claim that I can do this. Um, I'm just saying that I think from a writing perspective, it's always best when you can make it subtext, make it more under the radar, because you're able to, as I said earlier in the show today, you're able to affect people subconscious and you can make them feel, you know, a certain way when it's there. And it's not so overt. It doesn't take, it's not preachy. It's not condescending. It's not pretentious because people don't like being told how to think. People don't like being told what to do. And that was one of the biggest mistakes that Black Christmas 2019 made. Black Christmas, um, you know, 2019, on its own is a serviceable slasher movie, but it's a terrible Black Christmas movie. And it's preachy. And, and I know a lot of women who don't like that movie because they feel like they're being coddled, you know, um, coddled and 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 handheld and and all this. And 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 that's what you don't want to do. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be able to allow to do it. 100%. You should be allowed to write and produce and direct whatever the hell you want to do. And then you let the chips fall where they may, right? If it's successful, it is. Yeah. If it's not, it's not. But for a lot of people, it, it, you get your, you, you do yourself a disservice if you, your message comes across as, preachy and arrogant and pretentious and hitting people over the head like they're fucking idiots. And, and, and then it just defeats the whole purpose, right? Find ways to write a story that, that weaves it into the fabric of the narrative in, in subtle ways that makes your audience go, huh, hmm, interesting. That can kind of leave it open to interpretation so your audience, so you allow your audience to think about it, you know? It affects them when they leave. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to like, you know, hey, you're an idiot. This matters. And it's like, come on, dude, I just want to watch a fucking movie, you know? Uh, unless it's a movie all about that, right? So that's my stance is that social commentary can be really important and very effective in making if statements right. about society if done right. But the second you make it, and there's nothing wrong with having it overt. Like I said, I really enjoyed um, Get Out and we know what that movie was about, but it's when you make it too overt or you're not very good. Maybe you're trying to get too many things into the movie at once and now the movie doesn't really know what it, it wants to be. or it, It's very tricky. It can be very, very tricky. So I don't know what they're going to do with ends, but I I think I can speak Honestly, on behalf of most people. I'm worried. I think I can, <laughs> I would like to think I can speak on behalf of most mature film fans and say, hey, there ain't nothing wrong with social commentary, but let's not forget what this film is. It's a Halloween movie with Michael Myers, that's you know, it. and, and if you want to say this, if you have a statement to say about that, that's cool, but weave it into the narrative. So it affects us in a more of a subconscious way. Yep. You know, rather well, than like even uh, Frank Riker saying here, because that's my my argument, you know, when he's saying, where's the Ripley's and Sarah Connors? The right. reason why I've, I've said Ripley is one of the most badass characters ever on yeah. cinema. It's not because it's a woman. It's because Sigourney Weaver isn't playing the character like I'm a defenseless woman. What do you do? Like, no, right. she's just a fucking badass. She's just a and badass. she's going to kick some alien ass. And she's a fucking that's badass. it. You know, you didn't yeah. need to be sold or I didn't need to believe that just because she's a no, I don't view right. her that. Oh, she's a badass woman. No, she's just a fucking badass. Period. Right. That's it. You right. know, and yeah, we need to get more of that shit again. We do, we do. All right, uh, let's see here. There's a dark light, four years of future. Song fan sends in 499, says, Happy Halloween, Dave! I have accepted Halloween kills for what it is, but I will say I am ready for David Gordon Green to give up the director seat. Well, yeah, you know what? David Gordon Green's a good director, but um, yes. but I, I, I yeah, I, I'm... I don't know if he can go back to the way 18 was and everybody knows that I wasn't a huge fan of 18, but if he can go back to 18, I think he can stick the landing. I think if he can go back to that kind of a movie, I think he can stick the landing. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Michael Peacock sends in four ninety nine and says something I think people missed. Why did Lonnie go in alone to face his fear? He didn't go in as a kid. Now he feels compelled to. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. No, yeah. not true. Because if you remember the dialogue when they pick up Lindsay in the park. Um, well, yeah. Lindsay well, he's talking about to to finally go into the Myers house because he didn't. Well, no, before. he's been. He he had according to the dialogue in the park scene when they get Lindsay and Lonnie sitting there leaning over the hood. They talked about times. They, that's right. You know, they went into the house. So. At that no, point, but, his character has finally already gone in there. No, Lonnie actually turns and says, I, I lied. I never went in. Oh, that's right. He didn't go in. Right. So I think- yeah, so, Maybe he's just trying to man up. Yeah, maybe. 
Maybe he's yeah. just like, you know what? I'm going to go in. But but then Face there, my fears. But then there should have been more of a moment. I would have had him on the steps kind of looking up like this. Maybe he closes his eyes and he takes a breath because he's having a regression moment, right? Sure. He's having a regression moment where he's going back and he feels like he's that kid again. And maybe there's like a snippet. You know, we go back to the 78 film. Go in, Lonnie. Come on, go in. That would have been cool. That right? Would have been a, quick little, a quick little flashback. Yeah, to that wouldn't moment. that have been cool? Hey, chat room, would you have liked to have seen that? That would have been cool. That would have been Kinda cool. Kind of like that hesitation before going in. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, he's standing Overcoming there. Overcoming his fear. Dude, I just, I'm yeah. getting goosebumps thinking about that. Yeah, he's that standing cool. there. He's looking at, he walks up, his son. Um, Allison are watching him and he stands and he stops and he looks at the house and then he closes his eyes. He's having a, he's having a regression moment. He is suddenly that 10 year old kid that is standing there. Right. And then all, all of a sudden you hear it, you know, and it cuts. Yeah. To that, like, go in, Lonnie, go in, come on, go in. And then all, all of a sudden he opens his eyes and, you know, he tries to, you know, it's like, you can do this. You can do this. That would actually be kind of cool. That would have been cool. I would have thought, I, I think that would have been cool. If done well, I think that would have been cool. For sure, it would have been cool. Uh, all right, uh, let's see here. Michael Peacock sends in, no, I read that one. Song Fan sends in another one, says uh, uh, 4 dollars Thank you, Song Fan. Says, David Gordon Green and Danny McBride have made Halloween 2018, Halloween Kills, so goofy. They've added so much comedy, I'm so pissed. Um, I wouldn't say so much comedy. I think the comedy in Kills works better. I will say that. I it think, works better than what they did in 18. In 18, yes. I do agree with that. I, I I think 18, it felt a little kind of, it's because 18 was taking itself very seriously. And then they kind of had this comedy and it was like, uh, I kind of like the feeling of this serious movie. We don't need that. Um, whereas in Kills, it was a number of different tones. Uh, but I just think the comedy was a little more, I just think the timing was better. It was just better. It, it was just better executed. Yeah. You know, um, I wouldn't say there was a ton though. Uh, really, in, 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 in kills, the only really, you had a little bit with the kids, you know, kind of punk in the, 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 the big John and little John. Um, obviously you have some comedic moments with big John and little John as you well, too, but subtle, yep. subtle, they could have gone so far over the top. They could have in you with the innuendos, but yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah. And I like yeah. that. I like that. They kept the innuendos funny enough to go okay i see, I, I see what you're doing right um, right same same thing with the kids the kids on the swing when Lindsay's talking to them i yeah. believe it like you know they're they're, they're kind of being silly they're kids they're yep. you know whatever um yep. but that's pretty much it there's not a whole hell of a lot you know that's that it. i can think of beyond that's that it. can you think of anything in kills beyond that no, I mean, there's no, no comedy moments in the hospital. No, there's the, you know, I mean, there's little things like, you know, I stabbed her or, you know, he, he stabbed her in the tits, you know, and, and yeah. Okay. But, yeah. I, I get that. But I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Um, Xavier Murray sends in $10. Thank you. Xavier says I'm back, Dave. How do you feel about Jason? You mean Jason Voorhees? How do I feel about him? Uh, well, he's you know, great. he's okay. We had coffee he's last great. week and he's he's great. I love Jason Voorhees. He's tremendous. He's, best. he's, he's tremendous. the best. Melania and I visit him every Saturday. <laughs> we take him out. We have breakfast. I give him a gold chocolate bar. Um Wow. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, wow, this is a game, man. It's seven to five, and it's only the fifth inning. Who's winning? It, it Astros are up seven to five Ooh, uh, now. Like, come yeah, on. like this, this is a fucking game, man. Well, the fact that it's that we've last... been on for two hours, no, almost three hours, I know. and they're only in the fifth inning. Wow, this game's going on forever. That last that last win is always tough to get. Um, I like Jason Voorhees. Yeah, I do. I my Friday the Thirteenth are the, are the I basically like the first four films, and that's and I don't mind the sixth movie, but for me, Friday the Thirteenth is like the first four films. Really, if if I was going to sit down and watch a Friday the Thirteenth movie, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, it's going to be at least one of the first four movies for me. Um, oh, you know me too. I yep. love yep. Zachhead Jason and. Ginny. You know, I'm good with two. I mean, I'm good with the first two. Um, yeah. You know, occasionally I might be in the mood to watch three and four. Uh, obviously six, you know, fan favorites. It's it's six. It's, it yeah. is what it is. It's it's your uh, typical iconic, you know, slasher film. But for sure, honestly, I love five. I mean, I love ha Halloween. Friday the 13th part five, as far as like a, if you were to have a outline of trying to create the perfect, iconic 80s horror slasher film mm -hmm. that is pretty much it it's got everything you want in it over the top kills which one a lot of uh, part five 
um, you know, Roy Burns. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. got over the top kills. It's got a lot of nudity, a lot of nudity, and it's just a slasher film. And so, yep. like, unfortunately, it's not Jason, and I get why people don't like it. Yeah. For me, I just enjoy it for the fact that this is it's just a cool slasher film. If they had called it anything else, I don't think that movie would have the attention that mm. it gets. Right. And I think by calling it Friday the 13th, part five sort of gives it the attention so that fans know about it. it's kind of like season of the witch right. if you had just called the movie season of the witch for halloween we would we you and i would never be sitting here talking about it That's, maybe 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 but i get but you. because halloween it's titled halloween three it's part of the family yeah it, we we talk about it that's so. true that is true that is true um, you, you, Jason, uh, Xavier Murray follows up with a very generous $20. Thank you, Xavier says my only problem with Michael is how he is not, not dead. He got shot multiple times, stabbed in the back with a pitchfork and got mob beaten. Then he proceeds to kill everyone. What's your thoughts on why he doesn't die? <laughs> well, I don't know. Supernatural. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's well, and, and remember he should have a supernatural element to him there should be some sort of element to him but that element does have an end i mean you can't right. go too far with it or then I think it, they went too far i think that well it i it tend to pulled back on it a little bit Did i tend to agree him? i tend to agree i tend to agree i tend to agree i think they could have pulled back a little bit but he should have an edge. There should be an edge there. I mean, even in the original film, Laurie's looking at him, you know, and again, this is what's so cool. Like when she's looking at him amongst the laundry sheets, you know, she doesn't turn her head away and then look back and he's gone. It's almost as if he dematerializes right in front of her face. But the question is not, it's, it's not like, I don't believe that Michael actually did that he literally teleports. Like that's literally supernatural, <laughs> full, full, full stop. I don't believe he went, he, he, went full, he went full Star Trek and said, beam me up. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> of course he's not doing that. But it's cool that Carpenter placed him amongst the laundry sheets, you know, because it's like there's, there's movement there, there's sheets. What did Lori see? Is she really seeing that? Is, was he really standing in Mr. Riddle's backyard? Or is she just spooked because she saw him behind the bush and it's right. psychological and like i love all that so to have is, this is he edge, there is he not there yeah, right absolutely. exactly absolutely. to have that edge to michael that supernatural edge there should always be that there but it's an edge <laughs> it's an edge you, you, it's you're not now cliff. making him invincible <laughs> right it's, it's not a cliff it's not a mountain it's a hill <laughs> let's calm yeah. down everybody it's a hill you know um so uh yeah i mean really it's, it's why he doesn't die because they need to make more movies dream mem 77 sends in ten dollars and says dnt do you think that uh creighton duke is that how you say that creighton duke creighton duke creighton duke isn't, should isn't that rocky no. should be uh brought in from jason goes to hell oh, to jason, hn right. so he can reveal how to really kill michael myers in exchange for breaking a bunch of people's fingers i loathe Jason Goes to Hell. I cannot stand Jason Goes to Hell. He, he, he's lying. That's his favorite movie of all time. It's my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> it's the greatest. It's the greatest. I'm telling you right now, it's my campaign slogan for 2024. Uh, <laughs> Trump Goes to Hell. America. No, it would be Biden Goes to Hell. <laughs> America Goes to Hell. Um, uh, we're already there. Yeah. Xavier we're Murray there. sends in $5. We've gone past go. We're there. <laughs> Says, uh, they called the army to kill Jason. That is true. They did call the army to kill Jason. That is true. That is true. Uh, Joe Smyjohn Jr. sends in $10 and says, I still don't understand why Tommy says he always wears a mask. How do we know it's not him? Uh, oh, sorry. He always wears a mask. How do we know it's not him? When Tommy was watching the news report, when they put up Michael's mugshot on the TV, well, okay, I agree with you. To be fair, however, um, I don't think they put up the names of the of the two patients that are missing i i don't know maybe they did but you would think they would have you would think that they would have put the mug shots up and their names they would know who they were that would make sense yeah yeah because right. i didn't even think of that yeah that's if you, true if you knew which patients were missing you would then know have the name have right. the names yeah, you would likely right. have the names 
right? Because you had been able to tell by some sort of manifest or, or, or count, you know, so, so you would know. So, uh, but I don't know if that was the case in this film. Um, but to say he always wears a mask, he doesn't, I mean, I know it's just a matter of semantics. I get the last time Tommy saw him was, you know, 40 years ago and all that. And, and okay, I get that. Um, but he didn't, he was locked up for 40 years and didn't have a mask on at all. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, again, it's just, writing that I think should have been more clear, you know, in my opinion. Um, you know what I would have really loved during that fight sequence with the mob and Tommy's facing Michael and they're close to each other. I would have loved it. If Tommy just looked up and said, you've grown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> that would have been great. You've grown six inches since you're I've a, last seen you. <laughs> you're a big motherfucker. I kind of remember shit. you being only about five ten and really skinny. <laughs> yeah. You're <laughs> like, you're a big, what happened? you're a big fucking dude. What he's the like, fuck happened? He, you know, he's there. He's like this. He's like, yeah. Because in just, reality, the reality is, if this is supposed to be Tommy Doyle based on the Michael Myers of 40 years mm -hmm. ago, he would, he'd would be taller than him. He'd be right, than right, him. right. I think Tommy should have said, you, you're a big motherfucker, aren't you? <laughs> you take some big ass shit. That actually, you know what? I got to say, that actually would have been a fucking great, because I'm just thinking of the movie as it is. That would have been right. fucking hilarious. I would have loved been, that. It would have been kind of meta, but funny at the yeah, same time. Yeah, he's like, you know, you're because a, we all get it, right? Yeah, yeah. And he pauses. He's like, you're a big motherfucker, aren't you? That would have been funny. That would have been funny. Uh... <laughs> Fast forwards 29 sends in 999 says DNT, even though John Carpenter don't really care about Halloween. Well, he, he doesn't care. Well, well he does because he, he gets does. Every he, time. He, he cares about it. He loves that first movie. Uh, he, he just wasn't a fan of the, the sequels. I'm sure he uh, likes these movies. I don't know. Do you think it's ironically his fault to a degree that the series turned out the way it did because of the sister and family angle? Good. Actually, that's a good question because it was John Carpenter that wrote Halloween 2. He didn't direct it, obviously. He was offered to direct it, but he said, well, I don't, what, why? I'm just going to be making the same movie over again. So he, he was tapped to write it. He did write it. He didn't want to write it, but he wrote an angle that worked. Ironically, it did work. Um, so is he responsible for the brother-sister story angle? Yes, because he wrote it. Is he responsible for... Uh, you know, bringing back Michael in Halloween 4? No, because at that time, uh, he wasn't involved. He, he, he had actually written, there was actually a, um, uh, a story for Halloween 4 that was very cerebral, uh, more about sort of the residual effects of Michael and all, and how it affects the town and all that kind of stuff. And then, the, and they, they canceled um, Halloween. They no longer celebrate Halloween and all that kind of stuff. And, and then it was- That would have been an interesting take. It would have been. Very and then it's this, it's this suppression, this pretending it never happened, this suppression of, of reality that ironically brings Brings Michael back and, in what form? I don't know. But. And that makes more sense doing that because when you're talking about 40 years removed for, from an event, yeah. I mean, look, let, let's, let, let's be real. I mean, it's still a very tragic day in our history, but the impact of 9-11 isn't quite where it was within the first 10 years. Right. Now that we're like 20 years removed, I mean, it's still, you know, I'm not minimizing, like, don't no, take I get what it. I'm saying. I get like, it. No, like, well, no, because the chat room, you know, how, like, right, right. people misconstrued what you're meaning by it. Like, yeah. but the further you get from an event, it, it doesn't, it, it will always be a tragic day in our of history. Course. And one that, you know, my generation and yeah. you know, your, your gen, our generation, yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. Um, will always remember. But w when you're talking Halloween four, you're only talking 10 years removed. So it's still right. within that time frame of, That's right. yeah, your town's going to be pretty, and you're talking, he didn't just kill three people. He did with it. Is it 16, 15, 16? Uh, something like that. 16 people. Something like that. So yeah. when you're talking like that and the events of two, yeah, that would hold a lot of weight to a town. Like how do you regroup well, from that? And that's another thing too, with Halloween kills, as I've often said that I completely understand why they negated part two. I would have done the same thing at the end of the day because you want to go back to them not being related. You want to go back and, and you don't want to have to figure out a way to justify how he survived the fire when you are trying to make it a more grounded, realistic film. I completely sure. understand that. However, the way people are acting and responding and the intensity that they're trying to bring to these films, it you, you 
almost feel like you need Halloween two to be canon. And because Absolutely. because then all that stuff, because you know, then it might be justified why people at the hospital, like doctors and nurses and security guards, are losing their shit because he fucking murdered like ten people at a hospital forty years ago. And exactly. and maybe some of those nurses and doctors are the children of 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 nurse Karen or Janet or you know security guard Garrett. I mean, you know, and so now it becomes personal and like he fuck and now it's like we're not gonna let him take this hospital again and you know and yeah. but at the same time it's a catch twenty two. I understand that I why you don't have that. Um, so yeah, I, I I agree, but. Uh, Mustafa Khad thought that that idea that Carpenter had was a little too cerebral and he wanted to go back more of a, a pedestrian sort of kind of route. It would work today if it, that was their idea. Oh, it would totally work probably, today. It would work more today than it would have back then, yes. And, um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's something that I think, um, uh, yeah, where was it? Was it a question? It was a question, right? Did John Carpenter really care about Halloween? That's what we were talking about, yeah. Um, and turned out the way it did because of the sister family angle. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, it is his fault. I mean, it's his fault, quote unquote, but a lot of people love that angle too. Um, but certainly because, I mean, had he not written Halloween too, I think, I think he was contractually obligated to, I think, but let's say he wasn't. And let's say he didn't write Halloween too. It is entirely possible that Halloween too may have been a different story altogether. That's entirely possible. You know, so uh, it, it it is because of him that that yeah, was you're right. Created. You know, the more the more they 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 definitely like Allison even saying the line in this movie, he's haunted this town for 40 years. Well, That's you're what I'm talking, saying, like you said, you, you're you talking about Michael as if the, the events of one and two happened because like, look, no, again, not saying that it's not a tragic incident that right. Michael kills three teenagers, but right. really that's all he did. Well, yeah. okay. I mean, yeah, he killed the garage guy to get his jumpsuit and, of course, and whatnot, of course. but the over, as far as the town is concerned. And there's the fact that he killed his sister in 63, Okay, you know? Okay. I, 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 yeah. and I get that, you yeah. know, but we're, we're not talking like, I mean, look, murders happen in towns all the time. I mean, yeah. and, and, but the town isn't like grieving over I it. I don't you think the mean? town would respond that way. Uh, no, based not based like on that. the current event, Lori, sure, okay, you know it. I I think it would be more localized, be, you know. I mean, Annie's family, sure, Bracket, absolutely, you know. Bob's family, Linda's family, yeah. Some of them totally. may live in the town, maybe not, no you know. Fun. Right, totally, right. But this 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 rage that this this black eye this town has you know and listen for some people it works for some people they buy into it but just think how more justified all this rage and all this this poetic dialogue about michael in this town would feel if the events from halloween 2 were canon it would make sense it would make a lot more sense because but... he because because he touched more lives yeah you just got to figure it you you got to get yourself out of the, the out of the out you, you need an out with how two ended. Right. You need, you know, to make it, to, to have it make that's sense it. on the direction. Yeah. I mean. And that's what know. makes it tough. Yeah, it makes it, it tough that way. Uh, let's see here. Dan Sky sends in a very generous super chat of 1999. Thank you, Dan. And says, hey, guys, just want to say thanks for doing this. Just got in from all the Halloween festivities, and this is the perfect conclusion to Halloween 2021. Well, you're very welcome, my man. What do you think uh, What do you think will be the biggest surprise reveal in ends? Oh, that's a good question. The biggest surprise slash reveal. Oh, there goes my light. We're definitely over two hours. Um... The biggest surprise reveal. Surprise Rachel reveal. Carruthers returns. <laughs> I you could. Of all the characters that are left, that's probably the only one you could bring back and it would make sense that Lori Strode babysat her as well as a kid. You oh, can't I see bring what you're Jamie. But it, but, would, saying, but it wouldn't be the same Rachel from part... Well, it would be the same Rachel from part four, but that Rachel would not have any memory of the, the events from part four. Of, right. It would be Rachel... Right. at the beginning of four when she talked about how your mom used to babysit me when I was a kid. Right, it'd be that. James, but it'd the, be that, Rachel, but the, everything else didn't happen. Right, minus the rest of the movie. Right. <laughs> kind right. of like kind of like right. Marion Chambers. Nothing happened to her in H2O because That's it doesn't right. exist, so you can bring her back. Rachel is the one legacy character mm. that, that you could, and I know fans are like, no, we want Daniel Harris. Well, no, you, you, it doesn't work. I love that. No, we want Daniel Harris. Daniel Harris doesn't work, but Rachel could work because that character could have been babysat also by Lori when she was a kid and right. the events of four didn't happen 
And yeah, that would be cool to see Ellie come back and you know, be cool. Whatever. Uh, biggest surprise reveal and ends. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I I just I just hope it ends. You know, I've said this ad nauseum, but I just hope it ends on a philosophical note. And what I mean by that is a note that is that is mature. It's smart. It's intelligent. Not his eyes suddenly opening or him coming out of a closet or not on a cliffhanger. You know. And if you do want to end it on a cliffhanger, you end it like my sequel concept idea. I'm not saying exactly like that, but in that vein, you know, where it's mature and it's, it's, you could go on if you wanted to, I guess, but it, it feels like a definitive ending. It's more spiritual. It's more philosophical. It's more meaningful, you know? And I Do think not fans, end it with Allison saying, was that the boogeyman? Yeah. Like, but, but don't end <laughs> don't it. Don't do it, that. <laughs> don't end it where he's lying on a slab of concrete and his eyes open, you know, like, fuck that shit. Come on, man. You know, come on. Uh, yeah taking his last breath <sighs> oh god pc pierce <laughs> sends in 499 and says dave you're oh here speaking of my concept your sequel concept is tarnished by the facts charles cyphers could never carry the role you scripted for bracket he's way too old and crusty uh well that's probably true he's, he's a little old for probably the role that i had him in for my sequel concept idea that is probably true my man that's probably but i would have loved you admit it admit it though you would have loved to have seen him in that role i think in my sequel concept it was bracket that was driving the pickup truck uh, that picked them up. Brackett was the one that was driving the pickup truck that picked them up and he drove them to the hospital. He wasn't a security guard. He was just somebody who was like a hermit himself. He lived on his own in a house, you know. Maybe watched over Lori or yeah, something. Yeah, maybe. Know? And and he Kind just, of like a parental type. You know, right. Thing, and whatever. he never, he, he's been waiting too in some, in some regard. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. That's what it was. And he was probably a little more spry and you know, had a little more kind of, uh, uh, you know, he could do more obviously in, in my, uh, script and, and he does, he does die in my sequel concept idea, but he goes out in a blaze of glory facing Michael on the street amongst all this fog. And he actually says not everyone's entitled to one good scare. He actually says something like, you know, you fucking son of a bitch, this is for Annie, you know, and before he could, you know, do anything, Michael, kills him or whatever but i think michael had fallen to the ground and he can't quite see him through the fog and then michael's hand like reaches up through the fog and grabs him or, or something to that effect and uh that would have been cool yeah yeah that's that's how i that's how i wrote him him uh going out um while while john bon jovi's blaze of glory playing in the background yes yes actually yes. it's <laughs> it's my life it's, my it's life. now or never <laughs> i'm gonna live forever um, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my god! I'm gonna put well, that, that into Michael's. Brackets, Mike, Michael's first words are after that part. Dude, that right. <laughs> I am totally putting it into brackets. The brackets uh, uh, death scene. Fast forward it's 29. Oh no, I read that one. Oh, no, did I read that one? No, I didn't. Fast forward is 29 sends in a very generous super chat. 1999. A lot of generous ones tonight. Great show, guys. I'd love. Uh, I I don't love or hate this movie. I kind of feel the same way, but I like it for what it is. I love the beginning. Same thought. The ending was all right. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I hated the middle. Yeah, I'm I'm that middle. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm 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 feeling you there in the middle. I like 2018 better as a whole. Personally, same. I, I think it's a better movie overall. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, I love the moment in 18 when he busts through the door and he grabs Jamie Lee Curtis and like his lifting her off the ground and smashing her head. That was, that's, that's, that's some great fucking shit. Like that, that I, that I really like a lot. Um, song fan sends in 499 says Halloween ends trivia Oscar's mom and the extra lady who says evil dies tonight in the hospital is Dave's mom and both will be in Halloween ends. That's right. Is Dave's mom, my, my mom or Dave from the movies mom? Well, my mom, I, I know you're just joking, or obviously. It, I wonder but, if he means da uh, David Gordon Green. Oh, David Gordon Green, maybe? Oscar's mom and the extra lady who said Evil Dies Night in the hospital is Dave's mom. Oh! Gotta be, he's got to be referring to David Gordon Green. No, he's referring to Dave from 18 that was the boyfriend of Vicky, I think. Is that, oh, con okay. is that confirmed okay. that that was Dave's mom? Has it been confirmed that's Dave's I don't mom? Know. I don't know. I don't know. She was a little extra though. She was, she was, she was 
shouting it out there. Dan Sky sends in 1999, says, Michael being more human could just be this new backstory we are getting about him, such as looking at his own reflection and realizing it could just be uh, about Michael's own internal battle rather than a vengeful killer. That's entirely possible too. That's entirely possible too. That's what we don't know. And, and f for me, that should remain a mystery. It, should, it doesn't mean that you cannot pontificate, speculate, and maybe Halloween Ends delivers some kind of answer. Halloween Ends has something to say, but I don't think, in my, in my estimation, it should ever be conclusive. This is what Michael Myers is. This is what he was doing. This is what it, he's all about. This is what's been going on. 100% fact. We know it. It's been revealed. Dun, dun, dun. I don't think they can speculate about that and offer a different kind of tidbits in there, but there should always be a counter. There, there, there should always be doubt. You know what I mean? You have to keep the mystique and the integrity of the enigma intact. I agree. I also think it just the simplicity of it is is like Loomis says, he's a, he's evil. That's it. Right. Right. Evil is evil and you don't need more than than that. And he's just a dude. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like we we said earlier in the night, um yeah. that was one of the biggest things that I really enjoyed about this movie is they broke that umbilical cord of yeah, because I kept waiting for it. I kept waiting for Michael to show up at the hospital. Yeah, yeah. watching it, like I was like, okay, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Michael's gonna chase Lori again, and yeah, yeah. like the book. As and then I started going like, okay, this movie's starting to wind down. I'm like, okay, Michael's not going after, and <laughs> and then when and when Hawkins says that, I was like, yeah, okay, he's definitively not. And I love that because again, like it's like you said, you know, with Halloween fans you know, it just seems like with certain fans, they want the same story arc being told to them over and over again. It's like, well, how many times do you need this? Yeah. Um, look, Resurrection, for all its faults, unfortunately, didn't. they had the right idea. They just didn't deliver it, you know, effectively because, um, and, and I understand what you're saying. We, we weren't invested with these characters that they were trying to introduce to us, but I get what they were trying to do, which is to break away from all of the, the original story arc of Lori Strode. Mm -hmm. Um, this movie, what it proved to me is that you don't need Michael to go after Lori Strode. So when you're thinking about the fruit, the, the future of the franchise, look, you can always have the simple backstory of Michael killing Judith. And I've even told Dave, you can change the age of Michael killing Judith. It doesn't always have to be the same storyline of Michael right. being a six-year-old boy. It could, true. Michael could be a teenager. And That's he true. You can sister. reintroduce the story for a new audience later. Exactly. And, yeah. and just, again, open up the door with new characters and hell, you you can have Halloween night as Michael is a young teenager, iconic mask and everything like they just did here with the flashback sequence. But it, the, the final kill of that, it's Judith getting right. killed. You know what right. I mean? Like it's, yep. it, it's the lead up of Judith trying to survive this night of her brother coming after her. Yep. And now you've just opened up the door to just so much new possibilities yeah. without rehashing the same story. I because get it. You keep going down that same black hole of, of repeating the same shit. Eventually it just gets diluted and you end up with Halloween five. I get it. <laughs> It's true. Okay. Let's see if we can get through these. Cause uh, we're coming up to three hours. We've been on for three hours now and I have to, you're an eight. So <laughs> Uh, Xavier Murray sends in $5 says Jason Voorhees yes yes we, we we figured that's who you were talking about Cody Snyder sends in $2 says this Thursday November 4th is the three year anniversary for two dudes and some bullshit wow so this Thursday Tony November 4th it's our three year anniversary yeah. of our first show fascinating fascinating thank you for the reminder cody that is amazing and we finally we're, we're finally tackling my boy next week it only took mm, us three years to get there true. but we're finally tackling kubrick we are clifford franklin sends in ten dollars says hey dave i love the flashback scenes but what the hell happened to the bullet wounds in michael's chest dr loomis had already shot michael six or seven he has six or seven <laughs> times um yeah i didn't i don't know if they actually are there but we're just not seeing them or or There's if it is one a bit when of a he state. gets hit when you watch that scene again, when he gets hit by the cops from behind, you see something more in the shoulder range. Mm, yeah, um, I noticed that. I noticed that. And, and that's about all you see. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what that says to me is 
Loomis cannot hit a target at point blank range. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Xavier Murray sends in ten dollars. Says I just want them to officially release that Michael is supernatural. I get so, I get that some people like that they don't know how he does what he does. I just feel Jason is better lore wise. Well, but but see, Michael was not built on the foundation of just being supernatural, right? John Carpenter has said from the very beginning the intent was he is a human being but he has a slight supernatural edge. And what that means is, what Carpenter meant by that was, and remember, this was only supposed to be one movie. There was never supposed to be any sequels. Obviously, it's inevitable that the more sequels you make, the more difficult it is to keep the original mythology and lore and intent intact because it's, 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 it's survival is based uh, um, around, uh, you know... Its survival is based around uh, short term, right? It, it it can't it can't expand beyond that because then you are you you got to kind of explain certain things, right? So Carpenter had said this. That was the intent. We don't know how he does what he does. That's part of the mystery. It's Halloween, you know. But he's not he's not inhuman. He he's not he's not Jason. He 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 is a human being. But there's something there. There's something we can't quite put our finger on. Again, this is the first movie. Can't quite put our finger on how. Is, I don't, I don't, I don't, and that's what they were trying to go back to with Halloween 18. And for the most part, I think they succeeded. In this movie, however, this feels more like Michael from Halloween 6 or Halloween 5, you know, where he is more of a supernatural, you know, not being as in like an entity, but more of a supernatural force. Um, yeah. And that's that can be problematic, you know. So, um, but I don't think, you know... The right thing to do, really, the right thing to do is to figure out how to justify Michael in this movie and then explain that. And hopefully it's, you know, it satisfies fans that, okay, I guess he is. But it's not either or. It, it's not, he's not completely human. He's not completely supernatural. He's not half and half. He's human with something that we just can't put our finger on. It's eerie. That's fucking eerie. That is eerie. It's yeah. eerie because we don't know what it is. Dan Sky sends in four ninety nine. Says, "Do you guys think ends will somehow make Halloween two canon again? Could uh, that be the big surprise?" No, I, I doubt it. I doubt it because then you have to justify how he survived the fire and all that kind of how he can see yeah, and I mean, yeah, he doesn't look like a burn victim. You know what I mean? Like no, he's got eyeballs. I mean, what are you going to say? That was Loomis walking towards Lori. Yeah, you know what I mean, like yeah. that it wasn't Michael. Oh, I mean, I, get, I mean. Lori did. That's really that's really the only thing you can. That's only that's really the only. But then no, because according to this, Loomis had survived. You yep. know, and and, yep. and he trained Sartain. You know, like he. That's he, it. That's Sartain. it. So no, the, the fire the two can't. You can't have two cannon because you just can't. Unfortunately, nope, I agree. And uh, Xavier sends in five dollars. Wow, the last super chat. Can I just pay you to review a movie? I live for these. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, no, unfortunately I, I don't do movie reviews on the channel. Um, I do talk about movies. Of course, when I say I don't do movie reviews, I mean in, in the traditional sense, right? Like what, you know, like a like critics. Yeah, yeah. Like a Chris Stuckman or a Cody Leach where they, they re review the movie in a formal sense. They walk you through the plot. They walk you through the characters. They talk about their likes, you know, and their, um, dislikes for me. I reserve kind of that format for one movie and that's you know halloween you know whenever there's a halloween yeah. movie out i kind of do a review on it but i certainly talk about movies and i can talk about what i liked and what i didn't like but it's not it's not a review again some people could see it it, it depends on what your idea of a review is i don't believe that's what i do here Be, no. you know i implore and you to like look at my Dave channel and I... and there isn't really anything there yeah, and what Dave and I do on a weekly basis, we're just we're friends hanging out, watching a movie, shooting the shit. Like I know right. people expect us to be doing these. Like now, next week probably is going to be, you know, I, I know Dave's going to come at it from the more the philosophical side on the movie that we're watching. I'm going to be coming at it from the technical side and how shots were, you know, because it's that type of movie we're watching. Oh, it's tremendous. It's, but it, with that being, that will probably be the most as far as Dave and I will probably ever go when it comes to, you know, a review, because, you know, when you're talking about the shining, which is what Dave and I are going to be watching next week, 
uh, which has been a movie. I know a lot of people have been asking, you're talking about Kubrick. You're talking about an mm -hmm. art film. You're talking about yep. layers. Yep. Like that's the kind of movie where, you know, Dave's going to be sitting there talking about the layers, you know, of the shining. And I'm going to be like, man, fucking look at that shot. Like, look at how oh, it's yes. lit. It's going to be how not... it's composed. It's just, it's hard when you're watching a Kubrick film, it's hard to not get into that realm. But the rest of these movies, it's really, it's what the title says. Yeah. It's two dudes and some bullshit. We're just, we're, we're Hanging not out, here. Having fun. We're not here to critique it. We're not here to, uh, I see some comments sometimes uh, like uh, commentary. Like you know, when I think of a commentary, I think of people who were involved making the project right. and they're commenting on the moment that they were making this, what was going on, the scene right. and all this shit like that. That's a, like, we're just fucking shooting the shit. Like I get that request right. all the time on Instagram, you know, Hey Tony, could you do the review? I'm like, no man, I'm not a movie reviewer, but if you guys want to shoot the shit and talk about Halloween, I'm not going to send a hundred messages back and forth, but you know, it, I might go, yeah, you know, that scene was cool or yeah, that kill was cool or something like that. Right. right. That's cool. But when you start getting into like, at, like movie reviews, like you said, I leave it to like the Cody leeches and all those guys. Cause I just, yeah, man. Yeah. Like, all right. Uh, a few more super chats came in guys. Let's, let's slow down on the, I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. You Keep guys are amazing, them. but I, I, we, we, we I gotta go. Uh, fast forwards, 29 cents in nine ninety nine. Dave, did you ever get a chance to watch dark night of the scarecrow? And if so, what did you think of it? I have not. Uh, would y'all consider doing a two dudes on it? Happy Halloween. Y'all. Thank you very much. Fast forwards. I have not seen it. Tony, have you seen it? What was the movie called? Uh, dark night of the scarecrow. Yeah, that's with the um I told you you need to watch that movie. I have to watch um, it. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, that's the uh shit. I think the dude is in Dark Man, if I'm All not right. mistaken. Is it on Someone Netflix? In the chat room. Uh, no, it's free to watch on YouTube. You can okay. watch it for free. Okay. Yeah, just look it up. It's right. it's, it's it's an 80s, it's it's a good movie. Okay, Still well, I'm gonna look it up. Aunt Robbie sends in 499 says, Hey Dave, can we get a trick-or-treat motherfucker question? <laughs> no, can we get a trick-or-treat motherfucker? Question, why do they keep uh, taking the movie off track and not focusing on sticking to the basic 78? Uh, well, it's just how it was written. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, I guess, they, I guess, they have yeah. a story they're telling and, and, and uh, you know, they're trying to modernize it, make it new for today's audiences. And, and the, they, they have a story that, that they want to tell. And, and that's, you know, and, and that's why. Uh, Trick or treat, motherfucker. I'll give you a big one. Trick or treat, motherfucker. Motherfucker. There you go. Xavier Murray sends in $10, says, Spider-Man, no way home. Laugh my fucking ass off. I'm not sure where that's coming from, but uh, all right. He's laughing his ass off at Spider-Man, no way home. Corey K sends in $4.99, says, hey, guys, how do you think they will bring Lori and Michael together after four years? She's going to go after him. Yes. I think that's the, that's the best yes. way, we've yeah, because we've already established because, now because it's not about her. That's right. Be yes, because he's, because he's killed her daughter. She's going to revenge. She's yeah. going after him. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only way you can do it. Cause it would not make sense. You just established in kills. It's not about her. Right. Now and that, and that's, that's the best thing to do. Right. And now she's got the motive. You killed my daughter. She's right. going after him. That's it. That's it. That's it. And that was actually a uh, part of the ending to Halloween kills. That was cut. That was part of the oh, ending really? that was cut. Yeah. The original ending was uh, when she's lying there dead, Lori calls from the hospital to her cell phone and Michael picks up and all Lori hears is breathing on the other end. And she fucking- Why did they cut that out? I know. I know. I would have loved to have seen that. Would have that would have been a great call back to the original I movie. Know. What? They cut that out. They cut it out. Apparently, according to Christopher Nelson, what? he thinks that Miramax or Universal, some studio execs liked the liked cutting the black on Michael better. Of course, leave it to the execs. Always studio meddling. Get up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Valium sends in one dollar and one dollar. Thank you, uh, Valum. Valum. Thank you very much, my man. Appreciate that very much. Um, so that's why when we do our Halloween film, it's going to be the greatest one ever because no one's going to fucking tell us what to do. It's going to be the greatest. It'll be the best. And the, Trump is going to finance it for us. It's going to be the greatest, <laughs> the best it's ever been. The best. Billions. He can give us a million to do it, right? Oh. Yeah, sure, sure he can. Absolutely he can. Yeah. Absolutely he can. Fuck it. Should we go to 1130? 
Why not? It's Halloween. You want to go to 1130? You can go to 1130. It's 10 more minutes. Fine. 10 minutes. I got. You got 10 minutes. All right. My 10 first, more my minutes. First, my first appointment. I just, I was keep checking. It's not 10 minutes. Tomorrow, I got some so major good. numb bum right now. <laughs> my ass is falling <laughs> numb asleep. Bum. I call it numb bum, man. Numb bum. You know, when you sit on your bum for too long, and your bum gets numb. <laughs> Yeah, no. You know, you sit on your ass for too long, you get numb bum because your bum gets numb. Yes, that's what Man, I'm getting. I can't believe they did not go with that ending. That's wow. Okay, that's I'm telling you, that's what it was. I know it's See, hard to believe. Now, here, here's here's the other thing. If you take my 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 idea ending, yes, and and apply it to that, you know, Michael look, and then phone rings like, oh, yes. no, you thought it was on over. The street, or you or you do it as an end credit scene. You know what I mean? Or a mid credit mm -hmm, scene. Like mm -hmm. you could do it because we know the story is continuing. So yeah, yeah. You, you have the fade to black. Loomis says, you know, simply evil and go. Da, 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 da. Then you have a mid credit scene where the phone is ringing Ooh. and it's it's Lori that. Mm. And then Michael picks up the phone. I know. And all she heard yeah. was. <sighs> That's it. Just breathing. And the look on her face apparently was like, she, she, knows. she knew, she knows, and she's fucking, and she, she can't take it. She can't fucking take it. You know, like, I know. I I bet you, I wonder if they're going to put that on the Blu-ray. I wonder if they're going to put on a Blu-ray as an alternate ending, deleted ending, cut kind of thing. I hope so. I, I hope, hope so, so too, because I want to see that shit. I mean, if they, if they filmed it, they, I mean, put it there. Let us see what it, you know, let us see it. I want to see it, man. Dan Sky sends in four ninety nine. Says sorry, last one. I promise. No, no, that's okay. Hey, we got an extra ten minutes. Ten minutes. Uh, random, but Dave, do you? How do you and Tony know each other? Did you work on a project together? No, we actually, dated yeah, for yep, years. Yep, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that you we went dated there for years. That's totally a me <laughs> joke. I fucking love it. Yeah, we dated. We uh, yeah. we were married actually yeah. for about four right. years. We have a couple of kids together. Um, then he left my ass for a woman. I did. I did. I did. Yeah, did. No, uh, Tony. Well, Tony actually was doing the Halloween YouTube thing in the Back lead up the to day. 2018, 2017, 2018. Um, 2016, I think I started. Though. 2016, 2017, 2018. Yeah. And I started to notice, I don't know how, I guess I came across your channel and, and I noticed you were doing a bunch of live shows where you were like watching movies stupid and stuff. Shit. And then I just came <laughs> into the chat one day. Shit. I came into the chat one day and I was like, hey guys, what's going on? You know, and then we started to talk and then we talked, you know, um, away from it. And, and we found out we had a lot in common. Halloween, we're the same age. His birthday is five days after mine. Um, you know, we're both Gemini. We share the, you know, we share a lot in common. So, so we decided to do, to do a show. And, uh, as I, as I, left as, as you were, yeah, as you were winding down YouTube, cause you just were like, ah, it's not really for me. I'm, I don't done. Know, I'm yeah. done. I'm not um, a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. But, but you did say, you did say, um, that you would uh, be totally down with doing like a show for me once a week. If I wanted to handle it and do the whole technical side of it, you're like, dude, I'll do it. And I was like, great. So we did. And two dudes and some bullshit was born. And November the 4th, 2018, Google Hangout. <laughs> that was the first, that was the first. Uh, I think I had a wonky beard at the time. I don't or, think you had a beard. Or I no, think I that didn't was have before. A beard yet. Yeah. Yeah. I had plain background. Like this was like bare. Like it was just, yeah, yep. it was. And that was it. Yep. And yeah, he pretty much nailed it. You know, I started to focus in on, well, cause yeah, it was three years. I went on a three year run yep. of doing those photos on Instagram, the horror photos before my break and started back up that's because that's it. what really, that's what I wanted to focus on. I, yeah, I'm yeah, just, yeah. I'm not a YouTuber. Like yeah. there's some people who can do it. You, you, with, when it comes to YouTube, if you want to be good at it, um, like Dave, like Cody, like wham, like dumb drums. I, sorry if I fucked drum up, dumbs. I, I always call them dumb drums. I always call them that. Uh, drum, dumb, whatever, dude, whatever, bro. Lee, those guys, Lee, Lee, Lee uh, Wolfgang, Wolf, Wolf Nards, whatever your Wolf whatever Man's your name. got Nards, Barry. Yeah, Barry. Um, you've got to have a commanding, you've got to have a command for your audience, meaning you've got to be able to keep your audience paying attention to you, whether your audience agrees with you, which we know a lot of times is not the case. Um, <laughs> no, are you, you, know, are you, are you, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but you still got to keep it. And I just, I don't have that. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, right. I, I just, I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses put me behind a camera and I'll direct you all day long. You know what right. I mean? That that's where my strengths lie. Uh, but you know, doing this where I'm able to feed off of someone 
is so much easier for me to do than to sit there by myself. Like the videos, like, I don't dude, like I saw your review, you went two hours. I'm like, I couldn't even do that for 10 minutes. Like shit. Cause I, I would begin to question myself. I'd be thinking like, maybe I'm fucking rambling or I sound dude, like I have done so idiot. many, li- I've done so many live shows out of all, out of the 200 McRae lives I've done out of the 132 dudes and some bullshit. So there's 330 live shows right there. I've done live Q and A. So let's tack on another 50, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 380. Out of all the live shows I've been on on other people's channels, so let's tack on another 20. So that's 400. Uh, I mean, I've probably done between 400 and 500 live shows. I'm surprised I haven't canceled myself yet. <laughs> but to do that, you know, when Said people ask something like, that's how- like, oh my God. But to do that and to do it successfully, people ask that question all the time is, and look, don't take it as like a, as a fault that like, you know, you've got to be able to command your audience. That's how you're going to be able to connect. You, you one, you want to obviously have a decent setup so that your audience can, you know, you don't want to be, you know, shooting it with, especially in 2021, you know, I mean, our phones can do great things now. For sure. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you just, ha- some people, I think some people get jealous. I think some people get frustrated because they don't get the, 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 the subscribers or the views that you guys get that do this. Um, and it's, it's, well, no, Tony, either you're you right. have it or you don't. And right. there's no like, I tell I don't know people how to, how to I, describe it. You either I, got it or you don't. Yeah. Look, and, and, and it's, it's, you know, people have to remember, I talked a bit about this on my 25,000 K, um, celebration video, you know, and I, and I, you know, I said that, you know, people have to remember that, that before I came to YouTube, like I'm, I'm not really, a, I mean, I know, I guess I'm a YouTuber now. I hate that word. It sounds like a starving artist. Um, you know, <laughs> I right. must, you know, it does. Just it sounds not, like I, ha- I mean, you have a job. No, of like, course, you know, of course. Like- but, 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 but it sounds like I have no job and I live in my mom's basement. Um, right. but I much prefer the term YouTube personality. It just sounds more professional, I guess. But anyway, nonetheless, I guess I'm a YouTuber as well. And, um, but people have to remember that, that I, I didn't start there. I mean, I, I, I just started doing this for fun. You know, I, I've never looked at this as a job or want it to be a job. And part of the reason why, and, and I don't say this in a braggadocious way. I say this because I, I know myself, I'm trying to give people context of why I'm good at this. It's because, uh, you know, I, I'm a professional voice actor. I'm an actor. I'm a trained performer, you know, so to come on here and do this is, uh, this is not, you know, when I first jumped on to YouTube to talk into a microphone, that wasn't my first time. It's not my first time being on camera. It's not my first time in being, you know, in front of an audience. It's not my first time talking on a microphone, you know, I've been on the radio before I've been on, on, you know, TV before I've been, so it, it's very natural for me to step into this role and do this and make it look easy. Um, but you know, you can teach technique, but you can't teach talent. You either have it or you don't. And I used to tell that to my, I used to teach a one day introductory workshop into the world of voiceover uh, a few years ago. And I taught it for about 10 years, about four or five times a year. And I used to start with that. A hard truth, you know, it's not to sort of deter anybody, but it's, but it's to let people know that, you know, when you are wanting to get into a performing art medium, whether that is just talking in front of a camera, you know, and all the, you know, it takes a certain level of, of talent yeah. to be able to be engaging and interesting and talk for a long period of time, but it depends on what your audience is as well. Right. I mean, there are lots of people on YouTube that might not have an overly engaging personality, but they have a big following because they found their audience. You know, there are people that watch me that can't fucking stand me. They think I'm an arrogant, pompous, egotistical prick, which is totally not true, but it's just because- You are, but you know, it is what it is. (laughs) I'm a fucking ass. No, but I'm not, right? Um, You're an ass. I'm an ass, I'm an ass. (laughs) But but (laughs) You're an ass, I'm an ass. (laughs) But generally what that is though, is that it's my personality, right? I can be loud, I can be, you know, in your face, I can, because I'm a performer, I'm an actor, I'm theatrical, that's what I do, that's what I do. And some people really love that because they see themselves in me or, or they're entertained by me or they're like, ah, this is funny. I like, you know, whatever the case is, I try to make it entertaining. Um, but that's what it is. You know, you have to just kind of find your audience, be you, don't be me, be you, do what you got to do and be yourself and let the chips fall where they may. But are there people on YouTube right now trying to do this thing that are struggling? They are. And a big part of why they're struggling is could be one of the reasons could be is that they just are not made out. They're just not an on-camera personality. 
But you can find your talent. Look, look, true, true story. For when sure. I worked for the, when I worked for the radio station here in Atlanta, I was doing the mix shows. When it comes to mixing music and remixing songs, for whatever reason, yeah. it just clicked in my head. I knew how to do it. I knew how to creatively do it. You know, people who have followed the Flashback Friday show, that they, they, I get the compliment. Dude, I don't know how you do it. I love seeing you do it. It's great. You're fucking fantastic at it. I could but, never do that. But when it came, when, when they tried me out to do just the regular talk show on, I sucked. I couldn't do it. Like I just, I froze a lot of time. You were on I was, air. You, you I were was like on, on the radio air. for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they, but I People realized. People don't know that. Tony was a, was like an afternoon drive yeah. host or in the evening host on radio in, where was it? In Atlanta, Atlanta. or? In Atlanta. In Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. For, for one of the, one of the top 40 uh, stations here. Yeah. For about four or five years, and when they when they tr put me on to, to to be more of a on air personality, I sucked. I knew that was my weak my weakness. My yeah. strengths I knew were okay. I can mix music. I can program music. That's where right. my strengths were, and that's ultimately what I found within myself as a DJ and an on air personality. So, if you as a YouTuber are trying to make it into this. You may not see your strengths there. Like I did when doing YouTube, I knew right. my strengths were not there, but I love horror. And what did I do? I just segued into taking my love for that with photos that's because it. I'm a photographer well, that's and, it. and that's it. you just, you, you don't quit it, but that also doesn't mean you become a douchebag because you're not, no, getting the but same you have hits. to, you know, I, I agree with everything you've said. And, but you also have to know too, you know, when, um, when something's not working and yeah. you know, when something's not working, you can't beat a dead horse. You know, you don't, that doesn't mean you have to quit altogether, but you nope. got to start reevaluating and maybe you got to, you know, make a couple of shifts. You got to, you got to make adjustments and you got to really think about this because, you know, this kind of thing, talking, talking for, you know, on here again, like I said, I, I, I talk for a living. I'm a voice actor, you know, and, and, and I, I talk into a microphone when I'm not talking in here, I'm in there. When I'm not in there, I'm in studios in Toronto doing animation, trailers, promos, TV ads, radio ads. It's just what I do. And I come from a family that is that kind of a family, a very extroverted, engaging, loud, oh, hey, what's going on kind of family. So I already have that kind of a personality. So this kind of thing is very easy for me. It's not easy for people who it's who are not naturally that way. And yep. um, and I'm one of them and I know it. But I also have I also know my strengths are in other areas. And sure. I always encourage sure. people just because one thing doesn't work out for you doesn't mean you still can't be a part of it and just find your strengths. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. You got to know, you know, and there's nothing wrong with trying something and realizing, you know, this isn't working. You know, I have to make an adjustment for it. And I do, I see a lot of YouTubers out there that are trying their asses off and they're making some gains and stuff, but they're not quite, you know, and, and I mean, <laughs> You know, it is Everybody's what it is. asking us to go to November 1st. <laughs> November 1st. November 1st. It's in like 30 minutes. <laughs> they want us to go to November 1st. Oh my God. November 1st. Who's saying that? Fuck you all, you son of a bitch. If, 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 that, if, that if, that if that were Tony of 2017, I probably would because I used to do like marathon streams. I know. I know. <laughs> oh my God. No. That was insane. No, we got to go. Six I hours. Didn't, Remember I didn't, that? Like five, oh, six hours. Fuck. Streams. That was insane. Uh, Brooke Flynn sends in 279 says, Hello, Dave. David, bring on It's Me, Billy, William, Part 2. Well, we'd love to do it. We're hoping to get more traction with the first film, but uh, coming, certainly... It's coming we, out in December. No, no, <laughs> no, but we are going to start heavily... Everyone's like, what? <laughs> no, but we are going to start heavily promoting It's Me, Billy again here shortly, obviously because Christmas is coming up. I can't believe it's... Um, coming up again. And because uh, we want to get more eyeballs on it, of course, as well. And Mr. Bates sends in $1.99, says they could have that ending be the opening of ends. Yes, that's possible too. That's possible too. And Reese Wilson sends in $2.99, $2.99 and says for Dave's poor bladder. Yeah, that's right. I do have to pee. It's not bad, but I I, I do have to pee. It's it's true. It's true. I see. I saw all the bladder jokes in the chat room. I think that's fucking hilarious. That's fucking hilarious. I just peed all over the floor here. That's what I did. Now, can you imagine? That's where you, you just got to have like a little cup underneath that no one sees. You do. Hey, see <laughs> and you see Dave right doing here? this. You see Dave going. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, uh, uh, it's so, it's so obvious. Right. Uh, uh, like Dave, you don't he, have to be he, like he, that. He, he, he looks like Jeff Daniels, but the P version rather than the <laughs> shit version. <laughs> My God, that would be funny. That'd be funny. All right. Listen, you hear that music right there, fuckers. 
That is going to do it for episode 130 of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. Thank you to our amazing moderators, Frank Riker, Tabitha Short, Darren Sands, Chris Faber, for doing what you guys do. You guys are amazing. And by the way, don't forget to go over to the Slaughtered Lamb Movie Podcast YouTube channel if you haven't already checked it out. Earlier today, they watched Halloween 18. Some of you probably already checked them out. I forgot to mention it earlier. I meant to mention it. I totally forgot to do that. My apologies to Frank and Darren. They just won't ever talk to me again. But anyway, uh, you guys are amazing. You know you are. Thank you to all the Super Chat questions that came in today. There were a lot of them. My apologies. We didn't get to the non-Super Chat questions. Uh, just that, That's what happens. When a ton of them comes in, it was a busy night. Halloween, the month of October. It's crazy. Our apologies. Tony, any last things you want to say before we skedaddle? No, I'm excited that we're doing uh, Kubrick next week. The Shining, man. It's, we are uh, one one been in one in the works. We for a are, long time. folks. So we got another we long are. stream next week. Next Monday night, six o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our first Kubrick movie. It is the 1980 horror film, The Shining. Make sure you iconic. tune in. Iconic film. It's iconic. It's absolutely iconic, folks. We hope you have had a great Halloween. Happy Halloween to all of you out there. And we will talk to you soon. As Cochran says in Halloween 3, Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.